Okay, so I grew up in an old house in the south, kind of in the middle of nowhere. The house was laid out somewhat circular, as you could walk from the living room through most other rooms just by walking in a complete circle and ending up back where you started. When I was around five, me and my younger sister were chasing each other in circles while my mum cooks dinner. I was in front of her and we were laughing and carrying on. When we got into the dining room, in the inside was a corner with a greenish creature in a dark coat or something. It had pointy ears and sharp teeth which stuck out. I was young and I was still very small but I'd say this thing was two feet tall. It kind of looked like it had been at the bottom of the pond or something, very old and tattered. It then puts its fingers to its lips and starts grinning. I slammed to a stop and my sister was chasing so close that she ran into me which pushes us to the ground around the corner into the kitchen. We both started screaming and my mum ran to see what was wrong but the thing was gone. This actually haunts me. I'm 25 now and although I've done lots of research I've never found anything that really fits what I saw. For a long time I thought maybe I'd imagined it but my sister was seeing it too. Now it really terrifies me. I literally have no idea what this thing could have been. This story involves myself, then 20, and my girlfriend, then 18, in the middle of nowhere town in North Carolina. I was with my best friend at the time and I had nowhere to go and was saving up for an apartment for my own reasons due to irrelevance to the story. And my girlfriend typically stayed the night with me as well, as we had the entire basement bedroom to ourselves and he didn't really mind as we're all close and still are to this day. I was a pretty heavy smoker at that time and went outside to take my habit away from the house to which my girlfriend would follow to partake as well. So like any other time, I would grab my lighter from the bedside table and go to head out into his driveway, and this was a fairly common practice for me. For context, on this place, my friend lived in the middle of nowhere, really surrounded by forests, country roads and farms. He had a pretty sizable yard in front of the road which led to some dense trees, and the only place really open around these parts was a gas station that you could walk down into in about 5 minutes. Anything else was a good 15 to 20 minute drive away. Anyway, as I headed out, my girlfriend's behind me, with her and I having a pretty light hearted conversation, inside jokes and whatnot, before something catches my eye near the vehicle which is parked under the old oak tree near the centre of his yard in the driveway. I'm sure everybody knows the feeling of trying to focus on something that you feel isn't supposed to be there, so you tune out everything else around you. Well, that's what was going on. Besides my car, there was something crouched down, akin to how a cat or dog would sit. It was about 11pm, so it was dark and the porch light wasn't reaching far enough to get in, but I could kind of make it out. It had long arms, and despite being in front of it, the elbows actually poke out behind. There was no visible hair that I could see, it had a large balloon type head, and I guess 20 ears but I can't really tell. I'm not really sure about the size of this thing but I was a small distance away and it was crouched down besides my vehicle, but it looked like if it stood up it could be about my height. As soon as I start to piece everything together I was staring at it and I realised that my girlfriend began questioning me, calling out my name and walking to the side. Instinctively, I blocked her with my arm and told her to get back in as I continued staring at this thing which made no effort to turn and look at us remaining unmoved. She gave a sort of laugh assuming I was messing with her which isn't unlike me until she began trying to look at whatever it was. She then manages to catch the slightest of glimpse at it and I remember her saying what's that? I had no words to answer her with though but this confirmed what I was seeing was definitely real. In a panic, we both start backing towards the door, still garnering no reaction from the thing, 
at my car until eventually we get to the door fumbling for the knob and getting inside. After inside, she asks me what is it and I still have no idea. After we head back down to the basement, she decides to sketch what she had seen to get a better description of it and it's exactly what I saw. A few minutes later, I'm looking at it again on paper. A balloon or bulbous type head, long arms and everything. Now it's been a good 5 years since then and we moved out to our own apartment. So I'm doubtful she still has a drawing but I really don't know what that thing was that day. On this particular night, the occurrence happened back in March of 1991. I only remembered this because my father, a police officer, was working a lot of overtime on a security detail to cover for a worker's strike at one of the New York Daily News facilities in the industrial section of town in New Jersey, about 20 minutes west of Manhattan. It was a Saturday night and I've just gotten home in time for my 11pm curfew. I was a month shy of 14, and was surprised and happy to see my father on the couch catching up on a stack of newspapers. As I was expecting him to be working overtime, I sat on the couch with him and spoke for a little bit while there's a TV show on. After catching up, we turned our attention to TV and that's when I saw it. Off to the right of the couch while we're sitting there, in my peripheral vision, this thing is tiptoeing about six feet from me, by the fireplace towards the foyer door. Just as it was about to go out of view from where I was sitting, I turned my head in time to capture the back of this creature. It was around 18 inches tall, bipedal and humanoid built, with the exception of its legs, which kind of look like four animal legs if it's walking on its hind legs only. It swayed its arms and walks like any human would and was covered head to toe in very short tiny brownish hair. It was not clothed and had no towel. I only caught sight of it for around a second before it went out of view. I did not clearly see its face as it was walking away from us, though when I initially caught it in the corner of my eye, I was under the impression that it didn't have a snout or muzzle or close to a human's face. The one thing that stood out was that it seemed like it was sneaking, not scurrying, but deliberately tiptoeing. Like it didn't want to be seen or heard. Anyway, I'm sitting there for a second trying to process what I just witnessed when I turned to my left to bring this to my father's attention to see him staring at the exact same spot where the goblin turned the corner, completely in disbelief. I say to him, did you see it? And he says, oh, what a rat. All I could say is rats don't walk on their legs like that. At this point, he grabs his light and we proceed to lift Paul, flip over furniture trying to find evidence of it. We check the chimney fume, the fireplace which was closed, and all of the windows and doors are locked and there are no holes in the walls. There's nowhere for it to get in or out. The only thing we succeeded in doing was waking up my mum and sister and getting yelled at. Now, I'm not one to worry if someone thinks that I'm crazy, but... I seriously have no idea what this could have been. I kind of hope that somebody else had had something similar to this, I just don't know what to think of it. I'd like to share an interesting story with all of you, one that I feel is rather unique compared to most and hopefully I'll get an answer to this. So my story starts when I was about 11 years old in 2002 in southern CA. My mother had found a new boyfriend who lived up in the mountains. You see, I'd lived in the city for most of my life and was excited to hear that he lived in practically the middle of nowhere. Now. I always get closer to animals and people, and I know that guy has two ponies in the property, so the idea of meeting a new animal was enough for me to go along for a visit. A few months passed and every so often, my mother and I would visit his home. As I got familiar with the place and the animals, they would sometimes leave me alone for an hour or so to go outside on a date. 
Maybe that would seem insane nowadays, but I was perfectly fine with being alone. My mother, however, had one rule for me. Never to leave the property, and if somebody came by that I didn't know, that I'd have to get inside and wait until we came home. This is where the story starts, so my mother had left with her boyfriend almost half an hour ago, and I was bored with staying inside, so decided to go and spend some time with the ponies. Now, there was two of them. One was called Cinnamon, and the other called Colt. Not very original, I know, but that's what they were called. Usually when I came over, the two of them would wait by the fence until I come over to play with them, but today, I noticed that Cinnamon wasn't there. I chalked it up to her probably being in the stable, and went inside over to Colt to pet him for a few minutes. That's when things get weird. I heard a whiny of sort sound coming from the forest. I looked over to the forest edge and could easily see from the house to the forest without anything getting in the way, and what I saw standing there looked like cinnamon. She stood there, almost motionless, staring directly at me. Colt then passed, and seems to notice that I was looking. Soon looking in the same direction, he starts snorting and pouring at the ground. I've never seen him behave like this before, but I looked up to the forest and noticed cinnamon was walking in. I was worried that she had gotten out and got lost, so my childlike mind thought that the only thing to do was to give chase and try and get her back. I then ran into the forest looking for her, but it oddly seemed as though that she's just out of reach whenever I spot her. This is where the odd encounter is, in which I'm curious to get closure upon. Soon I couldn't see Cinnamon anywhere, she was gone, no longer any trace of her. I looked around and realised that. I was now lost in the woods and had no way of finding my way back. That's when I heard it. It sounded like two dogs mauling each other. I was terrified at this point. As soon as the sounds are really close, they go into screams and it really haunts me even now. As I stood there stuck in terror, I noticed something in the corner of my eye peeking from around a tree. I shakily look over and saw what appears to be a deer looking at me, however, I can't see most of its body. It was almost like it stood on two legs, standing there trying to hide but be seen just enough. I was afraid and confused by what's happening. The deer was looking like cinnamon, did, but its mouth fell open and I heard it whisper, you lost. Its mouth didn't move as it spoke, it just stayed open slack. Even though I was terrified out of my mind, I nodded. It hadn't moved an inch as it spoke again. Follow me, it said, whispering. It moved behind the tree, hiding itself, but then I noticed it peer from behind a different tree that was further down the path. Vividly, I remembered that I had no idea where I was or what this creature was, but I had no choice but to follow it. Every time I got closer to it, though, it would hide and appear behind another tree moments later. Never once did I see it walk from another tree. It felt like hours had gone by, even as the light in the forest faded quickly. I was still led by this creature through the forest. Finally, the creature peered around one last tree, with its mouth opening, saying, Go home. I could see that this is where it hid, and just behind it is my home. The flashing of blue and red lights can actually be seen from in front of the house. I stopped to look again. Now when I get home, my mum is crying and the police were there. I was punished for leaving the house and later my mum broke up with that partner. Not because of the incident, mind you, but I never got to return to that place, nor did I ever encounter the creature again. This memory has always bothered me as I chalked it up to being terrified, but I don't know if it could have been a skinwalker somehow helping me. I really don't know what it could have been. So about a month ago, I was heading home from work around midnight. As I exited the freeway to get on this 28 mile stretch of highway, I could see police lights as I passed the cops at around 60 miles per hour. I sped up to my normal 80 miles per hour. I drove about 5 miles and I could see a blinking orange light. As I approached it, the light was blinking on some kind of shopping cart or stroller. 
As I look up to see what was pushing the cart, way out in the middle of nowhere, I see a face that reminds me of the girl from The Exorcist. Maybe I was going really fast, but the face. Now it was miles away from the cops or anything else, plus it was over 100 degrees outside, I don't know. Now today my wife tells me that on her way home this morning at 6am, she was looking at this roadkill, just telling herself that it didn't look like normal coyotes, which are smaller and grey. When she actually passes it, she can see a little bright white person frozen next to it like it was trying not to be seen. When it noticed that she saw it, it leaps into the bushes and disappears. She said it was white, like a paper white humanoid, or one of those creepy dolls, about six inches and blurry. I've always felt weird on that highway, almost as though I can feel the deaths of the natives that once lived there. Now, I'm not sure whether it's a portal or something. I've always felt so weird though driving on that highway. I don't know if anybody's experienced anything similar to this before. I had a pretty weird experience that I wanted to share with everyone. Not just as a warning, but I just want to get your take on how I dealt with it and if I did the right thing. This wasn't just one incident, it was a few. So, I worked a few different jobs. One was as a store manager, and one was as a forest service worker. Now my job wasn't like your typical park ranger one. I basically just had to do tree surgery, or tree maintenance. I wasn't just a maintenance guy though, because I was actually trained to do CPR and other life saving things if I ever had to do it. So I was a little bit more skilled I guess than just a typical groundskeeper, but a lot of my job was just to care for the trees and stuff. Now this job always become a lot harder while working in winter. That was because of a plethora of reasons. One is, well, the trees are dying and they can easily break too. The area that I worked in had an issue where homeless people would sometimes take them down to make fires and stuff elsewhere. I mean, you'd have like an ancient tree sitting there. You come back a little bit later on, even in the same day sometimes, and you'd find that thing completely destroyed. I'm not a massive tree guy too, just I found it quite annoying. To be honest, in winter we didn't really have to worry about the fires because of course, how's a fire going to spread out there? So yeah, we just took our time to focus on other things. Now as I said, I had a few jobs. Sometimes when I wasn't working there, I'd also be a store manager. Now I remember while working in my store one day, it was pretty late and we had a weird person come in. One of the girls was actually getting quite scared of him. Apparently it was just a weird guy. He used to say really weird and creepy things to them. The thing was, actually every time that I went out there, he would have been long gone. So, I didn't really know whether to believe them or not. I felt like they were just using it as an excuse sometimes to do other things. We didn't have cameras too, so there's no way I could really check on it but I did take their word on it. I asked them to describe this person, and they said, well, basically like a homeless person who would lurk around. I told them that if they saw him coming again, that they should make sure they lock the doors and don't let him in, and just call me. The problem was, this happened sometimes, and it was when I wasn't actually at the store. It's while I was out in the forest, and I told them, no, call when I'm there, I can't do anything now. It's kind of funny thinking of it, but I guess they were quite creeped out. You know what really annoyed me most about it? The other management did not care. I mean, literally, they wouldn't do a single thing to try and improve this or stop it being a problem. And that didn't go well with me. I thought, God, I'm basically doing everything here. I did it because it made some extra money. The forest job didn't pay too well. However, I had a weird thing happen. I was there one night basically doing the night shift. It was a cold winter night so you don't see so many people now. Normally it's quite peaceful to be honest and you can just enjoy like your coffee and just looking out. Now we weren't really supposed to drink them but everybody did. I mean hey, it's the night shift, how are you meant to get through it otherwise? 
So yeah, that's what we were doing. Now we had a look around and we didn't see anyone. The other worker says goodnight and goes off home. I was there alone now and I noticed something. There's a glowing ember of a cigar or cigarette, I couldn't quite tell. It looked big enough to be a cigar, but it wasn't smoking like one, so I thought maybe it's just a weird cigarette or a few. I then thought, oh no, as I can see the dark hood of someone, it's more like a cloak. They look homeless and weird, maybe I finally encountered them. I think to myself, huh, maybe they weren't so crazy after all the girls. And I waited. I didn't think too much was going to happen, and I was fairly confident that I was going to be able to harm myself if it decided that it was going to go down. I also had a small weapon with me. I mean, it's just a pocket knife, but that thing feels much bigger when you're in a dangerous situation. So I waited. It seems like this guy is kind of just scouting at me and just slowly watching me. He kind of lurks around, then goes off into the woods, barefooted, I kid you not. His feet are disgusting. I don't understand how somebody could be out there in the cold like that, and I think, yeah, that, that's not normal. I actually start to doubt my own eyes and think, maybe I'm seeing things, or maybe it's some kind of ghost or something. There were rumours of this road that were on being haunted because there was a big car accident once, and the guy there apparently didn't make it and still haunts here. They say that you see him at night, but you never see him barefoot. He kind of just idly wanders at the side of the road. I was getting quite freaked out and decided to lock the door for a bit. I didn't want anyone coming in. I pulled the clothes sign up to try and calm myself down. Like I said, there wasn't any cameras in here, so I didn't have to worry too much about that. I mean, I didn't want another big boss looking over me saying, oh, why have you scared off the customers saying it's closed? But I just didn't feel safe. It's also getting terribly cold because one of the heaters has stopped working. I decide that it's my turn now to try and fix it. Now I don't know what to do. I took this thing apart and to be honest I didn't have a clue why I did that in the first place. It looked mighty dusty though so I cleared off all of the dust. I then get a burn and a sharp pain in my arm. God, they didn't even turn this thing off and they've asked me to fix it. I say aloud. As I say this, I feel something can turn over my shoulder. I can't quite describe it, but it was almost like I had a tick and sudden urge to get an idea of my surroundings. Uh, you're just tired, man, it's nothing. And I go back to what I was doing. I still can't figure it out and it's annoying me now. But eventually, I managed to get it back. So I put this thing back on and it doesn't work, so I just hit it and immediately it comes to life and starts blowing at first cold air into my face. I can't believe that, I say to myself. You know, I was always one for hitting things or kicking them to try and get them back to life. I used to do it in the printer room in my old office all the time and it would work like a charm. I don't know why I stopped doing it. I then stay there for a while just holding up my hands to the warm air that's slowly blowing out and I feel quite good now. I decided to go and make another coffee. I had a cut off time actually where I wouldn't drink too much caffeine in the day because I was one who couldn't sleep very well if I had caffeine. But at this point in time, I didn't really care too much. And also seeing the person earlier scared me. I start to think more and more about the very realistic possibility that I've had my first paranormal encounter. I end up sitting up on my chair forgetting that I've got the closed sign on the door, and I slowly drift off. I had quite an intense dream. I had a problem at the time where I'd always have nightmares. I don't remember what this was exactly, but I was in some kind of nuclear power plant or something. It was creepy as heck. I was around just doing maintenance even in that dream. I mean, God, I can't get away from it. And somebody was following me. Now I slowly open up my eyes, and I see there's a customer at the window. I kiss up quickly to see what's happening, and they seem to have vanished. Now it takes me a little while before I actually wake up enough to figure out what this is, and at first I think it's just a figure of my mind. 
probably linked into my dream somehow, but I don't know. I look at the clock. God, it's only been 10 minutes. I can't believe that. I thought I'd happily slept through a big part of my shift, but I haven't. Worse, I'm not going to sleep later now, and the caffeine's done its best to keep me up. So yeah, I suppose that was the one positive of it. I go around and put on the open sign onto the other side of the window, and I want to let people know that we're open. To be honest, I was just desperate to have a normal interaction. I looked around though outside quickly, and I want to see if there's anyone out there. I can see some footprints leading into the forest and close to the window. God, that's scary. The thing was though, they were partly filled with snow, so I can't be absolutely certain that it wasn't somebody there earlier, and maybe somebody normal, but why did they lead to the forest? I then start thinking about how wrecked my sleeping pattern's gonna be when I have to go back to my forest working job. I'm very paranoid and decide that I have to get a weapon now. I just want something to defend myself with, I'm not someone that can really fight so that's never been an option if I'm in a difficult situation. So instead, I'm basically just stuck there. Now when I head back in, I go to open the door but it doesn't open. Thank gosh, that's weird. I was certain, then I realised that I've let it lock on itself. I think, God, I just can't get it right. As I do so, I hear a tapping sound coming from my car. Now, I don't know what it was, but I think this is especially weird. I think, what on earth now? As I rattle around for my keys and go and get the spare one that opens the back of the store. I do this very quickly, then disappear around the side. At least I've got this now, and I hear the alarm deactivate as I go in. Ha, huh. that shouldn't have happened and I laugh to myself. Now I get in, and I realise too that something else is wrong. There's some footprints going around, just like somebody's come out of the shower. Now I don't know why in my stupid mind I was fixated on how did the alarm get turned off, and I don't realise that there's some movement coming from inside the window. I presumed it was coming from outside, so I decided to go in the back quickly. I then hear a scurrying sound and hear the front open. Now I was actually angry, I get the knife out my pocket and do a little charge, screaming making all kinds of sounds. No, I'm too late, as I see somebody rush off into the forest. I go back and I can see that they've stolen some food and things. Nothing too important, but I don't want to get in trouble with my boss, so I decide the best thing that I can do is basically just hide the evidence. You didn't have to try hard to do this because it was an old store and nothing was really audited, so all that meant is that you had to move some of the items around, putting different ones behind it and it looked like nothing had vanished. So I do this and try and calm myself down. Not too later, I hear another sound. My heart drops as I go to see what it is. It's a truck. I feel so relieved to see a normal person. They say hi, I need to get some gas. I say sure, certainly. And I go and get the pump to work for them. They say are you alright and I say yeah fine. Maybe it's because of the caffeine and me being scared prior but I'm overly eager to help them and I think they actually found me a little bit weird and were kind of put off. I say, no, no, I'm, I'm just here to help you as they kind of hesitate for a bit. So now I've become the weirdo in this situation. They then say to me, hey, I saw someone walking down the side of the road. I don't know if they needed help or what. I say, that's weird. And say, what were they wearing? They said they don't know. I don't know how you can't possibly know that if you've noticed somebody, but they really seem to not have an idea as they go back into their truck and drive off. Seeing that drive off was literally like watching my last sunset. A wave of emotions were going through my body, and I didn't like any of them. Suddenly it felt much colder and the snow seems to pick up almost instantly, or more rather I suddenly notice it and become more aware. Maybe that's the fear setting in, I don't know. I just take a deep breath out, then turn back to go back inside. 
I tell myself, you've got to calm down, you're going to scare them off now. I'm basically trying to stop a catalyst effect now, because I find that when I get scared, I can panic, and that makes everything worse. So I just keep on working the till and try and act like nothing has happened. So I do this, and what do you know? Another dream. I drift off, but this time, I have a strange dream. I'm walking through the forest now. Everything seems so cold and still. Snow is everywhere around me, but not directly where I am currently. The air feels very cold and I notice my breath. As I'm walking through the forest, I see something, or someone. Every so often, I turn a corner and I'll see them for a literal flash and then they disappear. Also, there's some kind of alarm going off at the same time. It kind of sounds like a warning, but I don't know what it's to, and it's slowly getting louder and louder. I go to look around, and I realise that my vision's blurry. It's almost like somebody smudged the top of my eyes, but it stays in place when my eyes don't. Now, as I go on, I feel more and more nervous, and I feel like I'm being stalked. Suddenly, everything stops and starts going backwards, and I can feel that I'm being dragged away by something. My vision stops again, then it all goes black. I wake up now very quickly, basically in the midst of a heart attack, my mind not knowing what's real and what's a dream. Calm down, calm down I say to myself. And then I'm in my dream again. I can see two figures up ahead of me. They're wandering around looking at blood on the floor. This is really weird. I can hear alarms now but they're different. I'm walking around and nobody seems to notice that I'm there. The blood, I, I just can't get over the blood. It's really weird. It was almost like I was a silent observer to something horrible but I didn't know to who or what had happened. Now, I go across a bridge which is covered in snow. I don't feel the cold or anything, and I make my way back in. I go into a white room, then everything goes black again and I'm awoken. I hear banging on the door. It's my colleague. I jump up really quickly, and I say hey, rush in to let them in. I've come to my senses extremely quickly now. They say gosh, what happened? You seem really shook up. And I said that well, I had a bad dream. And I take a while to calm myself down. They say, go home man, you look like you really need some rest. And then I say, well, the night shifts get to me. And I don't really mention too much else. I do say that I thought I saw something paranormal. And he says, alright man, you're probably dreaming. He really doesn't listen to me. But I then explain that I'm pretty sure that I've seen that guy that the girls are all scared of. I then explain roughly what they were wearing and the direction that they went in and my colleague seems absolutely in a state of dismay. God, I thought it was all a lie and now you're telling me this? And swore. I say, yeah, just be careful bro, honestly, it's really weird. Then I get into my car and start up the engine. I took a while just to calm myself down and think, you know what, I probably just need a good rest and this is all nothing. The problem is too, I'm only about one day away from having to start my other job. Now I didn't like driving at night, especially not when I was tired, but I almost went into a trance or something and kind of just gotten on with it. I remember driving through the snowy hills as I'm on my way home, and I can't stop thinking about my experiences that night. I think maybe I was just really sleepy and I merged dreams with reality, but it didn't feel like it. There was something about the emotions which I was feeling during the times that I was definitely awake, of which were too powerful and sobering. I'm never somebody to confuse dreams with reality too, so I know the chances of this being the case were very remote at their very best. Still, it was definitely something odd. I realised too that I wasn't driving very safe either because I was constantly looking on either side of the road trying to see if there was anybody walking past. I was convinced that I was going to run into the ghost of the person in the car crash. 
I was maybe going to end up as that ghost too, I thought, and I started to slow down a little bit. I was actually gripping the steering wheel so hard on the drive home that all of my knuckles have gone white, and I really struggled to move my fingers. I get in and basically collapse, and I probably had the best night of my sleep ever that day. I think my body just decided to go into some kind of coma state to recover. I remembered when I woke up though, I felt ever so drained and just kind of weird. Maybe my brain was fried from what had happened, but it was a nice day and the sun was actually shining. I took a look around and I can see some snow falling too. It's the only time that I've ever been able to see some of the sun and snow at the same time which I thought was really bizarre. It wasn't heavy snowfall for anything, but it was weird. I then start to hear an alarm sound again. It kind of sounds like when there's a dangerous gas alarm or maybe from a radiation counter thing, like the modern ones, but it was really weird. I then step outside and realise that it's one of my neighbour's house alarms. He comes out with his gun saying, hey, hey, and for a second aims it at me and I say, gosh, what are you doing? It's me. It's me, it's me. And he then lowers his weapon and says, Sorry, someone just tried to break in. They were heading your way. I say, What? He says, Yeah, I think they were trying to rob you or something. It's really weird. He rushes around and all we can find is footprints. We look at each other and realise that we need to follow these. I go quickly to grab my coat. I've still got my knife in my pocket from before and a flashlight. The sun started to fade away now and it's a little bit late in the evening, so darkness is upon us. So we head out there, following these tracks, talking about who it could have been. My neighbour was in a bit of state. Simon kept saying, God, I'm gonna kill them, I'm gonna kill them, I'm gonna kill them. God, I need to kill these, and I tell him to calm down. And why is he so angry? It's just a break-in. It's not the first time one's happened around here, but he said no. I'm telling you, something was off this time. There was something wrong about this, I can sense it. I was actually a little bit worried about him too. I thought, well, I don't really like the fact that I've brought a knife to this gunfight, if it comes down to it. But we continue on. Now we're following the footsteps, and this is the first thing that I really can't explain. It seems like they're constantly getting further away, yet they're incredibly fresh. But there's no one there. I mean, what's especially weird is that you would think from how fresh they were, on your horizon you should be able to see someone, but we would see the tracks stop, and as soon as we got a bit further up, it would continue going, and we are basically never getting any closer to them. We keep going deeper and deeper into the woods, and the whole time I'm starting to feel quite uneasy with this all. There was also a mist which picked up at about the same time, which makes the whole thing much more horrible, to be honest. Now, no excuses to be weak or scared. I had quite a lot of energy, to be honest, because I wasn't as tired as before, so I used this to try and motivate myself to be more brave and actually take the lead. We've probably been doing this for almost half an hour, when I say, come on, Simon, stop. This is what, Ryan? So let's just turn back. This is getting dangerous now, as we realise that we're going further and further into the forest, seemingly having absolutely no gain on this person. You could just see the footprints, which seem pretty large. He says, yeah, you're right. Silence actually washes over us for a few seconds as we look at each other. We're both actually quite nervous now, as we realise that we shouldn't have really done this, so we start heading back. I take one last second to look over my shoulder. I have the feeling again, the same one from being on the gas station. But I try and push it aside, and we start walking up ahead. Now my friend's taking the lead, Simon. He's actually walking much quicker than me, and it's the first fear that I've detected in him. To be honest, he has guns, so I don't really know why he's scared. The guy with the little flimsy pocket knife was being the brave one, but hey, I'll take it. On the walk back, it's starting to get dark now, and we realise that this is a really stupid idea. I don't want to be stuck out here. The problem is too, you know what, the next day, I had to do my job in the forest. 
I was really picking up more and more bad memories from being out here in the cold, and I was worried that it was going to start traumatising me a little bit. So I decided just to distract myself. Yeah, I've always been good at that. If ever there's something painful or discomforting going on, if I distract myself, I can really take myself out of the moment and not feel too bad. My mind is now desperately searching for the next question, and before I knew it, we were back. He shook my hand and said, well, see you, Brian. I say, well, bye, Simon, and I go into my house. There's not much for me to do when I get in, so I make myself a TV dinner, watch some TV, and start to relax a little bit. I start to watch the local news channels a little bit, trying to see if there's any weird suspicious activity. I don't know, aliens, anything to explain this, but nothing. Not a break in. All is normal. Just cool, whatever. I turn off the TV and I go to my bed and start trying to sleep. I have a very comfortable bed and I've actually got a heated under mattress, so this thing is absolutely lovely to fall asleep on. Again, I have a lovely sleep. Honestly, I wish I'd done this every week and had something chaotic kick off, because it's only then that I seem to get some real good shot eye. So I wake up in the morning, and I wake up suspiciously early. I'm always paranoid that I miss my alarm, so I go and check it quickly, but luckily I hadn't. Great. I actually decided to try and leave sooner than normal this time. I want to try and beat any potential traffic. Or just anything that can make me late. I'm one who doesn't like tardiness, so I was especially trying to avoid it today. I thought maybe I could burn off some energy from doing that too. So I start driving, and I'm just about to fall into my work, and I see someone by the side of the road sitting. I try and look back, but I've already rounded the corner by then, and I wonder whether it's actually a person or maybe some kind of snowman that somebody's made and decided to throw a jacket on. So I go inside where the small gift shop is. It's not really a gift shop, it's more like a cafe, but they have some handmade things in there. I say hey to the lady that works on the till. She's been there for ages, and she said she looked tired. I say thank you sarcastically, and go over to my desk. Emails. There's probably about 60 that I have to reply to. They really accumulate, but it's basically just saying what jobs and tasks I need to do. I have a habit of printing them out and bringing them like an itinerary. Trees that have fallen, things that have gone missing, things that I need to repair. I sigh it as I'm going to have to bring some heavy equipment with me as I go out there. Also, I wasn't finishing too late into the night, but I was going to have to be out there while it was a bit dark. They actually did this so we wouldn't have visitors there at the same time as we were repairing things, which I think is really silly. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? Who's not going to come here because they're actually maintaining it? What do they think? Some freaking aliens come down and do all the work, as if by magic, or there's some kind of invisible helpers? I don't know. I sure wish there were, though. So I go out. I was the only one working there at the time. And that's something I didn't like too. It meant that I had more work to do, and it also meant that in the previous shift it was the same. They kind of staggered our shift pattern, so it meant that they might not have done everything. I always preferred having someone to speak to too while I was out there. Now I head out and I have to come across a wooden bridge. There's quite a lot of these around. They're pretty cool, but I never trust being on them. I know they're meant to be built well, but I just don't trust them for some reason. So I start making my way across the bridge when I suddenly see that there's some footsteps here. Now the footsteps continue on the path that I'm going on, and that gives me chills. It's literally the only time that I've ever seen footsteps like this before. Visitors rarely actually use this because the main place that looks pretty cool, that's quite far from here. And I'm on a maintenance route now, so why is anybody up here? To be fair, I have seen people here before, and they just use it to pass through basically, and that's fine. But not today, it just felt weird. 
So I go over and start doing some maintenance work on one of the trees that I had to clear up. Someone's really had a go at this thing. They basically tore down lots of branches and stuff and that annoyed me. I don't know why, it just really got to me that day. I start to get more and more frustrated and start calling out saying why can't people just respect this place for what it is. Then I realise that it's probably given me a job so I quickly be quiet. I then hear somebody laugh. It was only for a second but kind of like a quick ha. It's in a really weird pitch, starting high then ending low, followed by some weird exhalation. I realise nobody's out here, so I think maybe it was some kind of animal. I don't know if anybody knows any kinds of animals that can make laughing sounds, but if you do, let me know in the comments, because I sure hadn't heard of it before. So I continue my work. As I'm doing so, I do realise weird things. Every so often when I put my tools down, something seemingly goes missing or becomes displaced. It's like I'm losing my mind a bit. I could put down maybe a drill or something, then turn back and it's moved three feet to the left. I just tell myself, Brian, you're doing okay. It doesn't matter if you lose it. So I calm myself. I then hear what sounds like laughter again. I'm really confused now. I turn very slowly and pivot on my heels. It kind of sounds like a pig laughing if that makes sense. Kind of like the grunting sound they made. This goes on for a few seconds and I think well maybe it's some kind of boar, but we don't get them here. It certainly wasn't a farm pig too, so I can't figure out what it is. It seems like it's only when I'm confused as to where my tools have went that I actually hear this sound. And that again is quite annoying. It's mocking me, but how could it possibly mock me out here? I can then see movement further ahead, and I realise that somebody is on the trowel, but they're doing a good job to stay out of sight it seems. Again this casts a lot of doubt into my mind. I don't know. This could be anyone. But I quickly finish up what I'm doing and I'm able to head back to the station. From getting back to the station, I do an count of all my tools and I realise that some are missing. Ah, oh, that's great. Tell me what that means. You guessed it, I'm gonna have to go back out there and face whatever this is alone. I'm not sure if somebody's actively stealing from me though. It seems kind of like a very low probability out here. So. I just slowly head out, again with my knife. This time I brought another screwdriver with me so I can try and stab someone. I don't really have much faith in my pocket knife being able to defend me, so I thought the screwdriver is going to have to make up for it. Now I eventually do find my screwdriver but it seems like it has moved and some of my other tools that I was missing. Again. Why on earth have these things moved? I just don't get it. I collect them all and quickly head back in. I get through my emails and I realise there's none more. There's basically nothing left for me to do and I start to relax now. I felt really good. I put the heating on and just grab some of my reading things. If you get finished early, you don't really have to do anything. Annoyingly, there's like a clock in and clock out system, so they're basically going to be on the dot regardless, so you can't always go home unless one of your friends signs for you. But none of them will work in there today. So, I just make myself at home and try and relax to the best of my abilities. Now in these circumstances, it is pretty hard, but it doesn't take too long, and I quickly forget about what happened to me. It all was well, and it comes around to almost 12. Well, to be precise, it was quarter two. I then get up to see if my other colleague has come. He usually arrives early where he does the night watch. He doesn't actually go out or do anything, he just sits there, but he's cool. I don't see him though, which again is odd because usually he's always there early, so I think that's bizarre. 
I then hear a scream sound. Only for about two seconds, but it kind of puts me into a state of paralysis. I'm basically just froze there watching what's happening, which luckily turned out to be nothing. Okay, that's great. Well, it could just be a fox or animal. We don't get arctic foxes, but there's similar things out here, and I think maybe it's one of them. Ah, oh, that's it. One was injured, and maybe it thought my tools were food or something. It sounds silly thinking of it now, but at the time I thought that was a great idea. I solved it, and I'm suddenly very merry. And my colleague arrives, I say hey, and we just spoke for a while. I think both of us actually appreciated having the company, so we just sat there talking for about a good hour or so. He's really excited to become a marine, and we're just talking about that for a while. I then said about my future plans to make some companies. I knew that I was going to have to change jobs because I wasn't going to be able to get the time and resources to do it with what I was currently doing. Also I felt tired all the time. I noticed more and more that I'd just be more willing to sleep after work and that wasn't really a good thing because nothing gets done then or if you do things you just feel like all of your time has gone on to work in which also isn't nice. So I don't know. I felt a little bit down at this point, but as always, I can be resilient, so yeah, that's what I do. But anyway, after explaining this to him, he says thank you and we say our goodbyes. I think he needed kind of the pep talk and needed to learn about resilience, so he really appreciated it. So I get into my car and start driving back. Now my car feels cold and doesn't respond well. It's a car that doesn't always do too well in the snow, but that was fine. I was going to drive more slowly now. I hated to drive in the snow. I loved how peaceful and quiet it was in the roads, but the cars didn't always have ABS or whatever you call it, so the tyres could basically lock up while you were driving. This actually happens to me a few times, and I have to kind of tap on the brakes. It's a weird technique I picked up. Actually, when I changed cars, I still adopted this, and I stupidly put myself in danger because of it. Now I make it back home, and I realise there's footprints everywhere. They're all around my house, and even my neighbour's one. So again, I think maybe somebody's trying to get in. I quickly rush inside, have my knife ready, but I can't see anybody or anything. I quickly go over to Simon and ask him if he's seen anything, but Simon hasn't. He seems like he's just woken up and says, nah man, I, I don't think there's anything. He come to me in his briefs and that's a memory that I'm never going to forget anyway. So he goes back to sleep. Don't know why he wasn't embarrassed by it or I didn't put clothes on to get to the door, but I guess I'll never know. So I settle in, get into my routine and my mum calls. My mum was always worried about me and did a really good job of checking up. My parents actually split up and I didn't have much contact with my father so it was always nice when I got a call of her. So we talk for quite a while and eventually I say I have to go to sleep for my shift and we say our good nights and I settle in. So I wake up the next day and everything's normal. The snow this time is much more heavier though. I was actually really hoping that I was going to get a call off of the guys to say that I haven't got a bother coming in but unfortunately it didn't happen. I mean, it literally never happened while I was there, but I heard stories of it happening before. It's not like school, unfortunately, but maybe it will change one day. So I get in my car and again, I'm driving as cautious as I possibly can because I know how easily that my car goes off the road if I'm not careful. And that starts happening. I get really close to going off the road and kind of end up in a ditch, and I think, great. The funny thing was, I was only about 30 metres from my actual job and workplace, but my car decided to give out then. I tried quite a few times to get it out, and decided just to wait for a while. I realised then that I can get some boiling water and basically free my car if I can do the walk, so I do that. I say hey to my buddy, and he says that he's going to help me out. He's kind of like one of those Labrador dogs, 
the golden retrievers, the wonder dog which wants to be your best friend and always help you. So I was very happy with this. We threw some boiling water down and luckily it frees up my car. I couldn't believe how well it worked actually. So that's something that I've always remembered since. So what do we do? We get into my car and I drive him back. I then make a joke about charging him for the trip, but he goes over his head somehow. I really don't know how. I then start explaining the joke and just give up on him trying to understand it and say no, don't worry about it. He says oh yeah, huh, and finally gets it. I look at him like he's really weird. Now, I get in there and I check the emails. He says you're not gonna like this. I say what's that? He says well, I'm pretty sure last night that I heard someone out there. I definitely saw them. Someone was lurking around and I thought they were in trouble, you know. I went out there and tried to hunt them down, seeing if they needed anything. But it's like they would just run from me. I say, what do you mean? They say, I don't know if there's forest people out there or what, but they wouldn't come near me in the southern accent that he had. He actually grew up on a ranch somewhere and he said that he had a good idea and good feel with people, and that person just didn't feel right. I think, well, at least I'm in the daytime now. I don't really care, to be honest. If this happened in the nighttime, I'd be like, yeah, sure, let's call the cops and everything. Now, I'm a little bit annoyed to say this, but I, I really didn't care. I just thought, well, it's the daytime. I'm not that small of a guy. Maybe I could handle myself. Who knows? Not like I could fight, but... I should be alright, and I trusted myself to be able to run off. Yes, a great instinct, a warrior's will. But yeah, he then says that he's actually going to stick around for me, which I really appreciated. It was kind of like returning the favour of me helping out the other night and having those conversations with him. He starts talking about the ranch where he's from, and saying how much he loved it. I asked him why he liked it so much and he said he kind of felt like a real life cowboy. He would do the cattle handling and things like that and work in to tame the horses and I thought that was really cool. He even said they had donkeys out there and I started to clown him for it. He then mentions to me that he's going to head over to a 7-Eleven or Walmart and if I wanted anything. I say no no that's fine don't worry. I did really appreciate it though, he was literally offering to drive away from work and then come back to give me supplies. I didn't have any other friends that good there so I thought that was really cool. I then checked the emails and I have to go and repair something. It's a part of the bridge. I wasn't sure but it seemed to be the same one where I thought I'd saw the footprints or the person walking so I was already a little bit hesitant to be out there. I then step out and just make my way there. Now because of the clouds and the heavy snowfall, it actually looks kind of dark. You could actually see quite well though because maybe it was a reflection off of the white of the snow. But you seem to have pretty cool visibility which I was happy about. So I make my way up and I'm not too far away from the bridge. I start doing my repairing work when I notice something. I feel kind of heavy suddenly, almost like headed, like I'm gonna vomit. I don't know why that is. I knew it was very cold though, and I suddenly feel a bit wet, which I think is really bizarre. Then, something comes over my mouth and I hear a whisper in my ear. I know where you live. I was certain it was my colleague playing games on me, and I kind of ignored it. My head then suddenly comes back. I kind of fall a bit as I realise that somebody's pushed me. I go to get up to see what's happening, and I notice somebody running off into the forest. I get up to go after them, but I feel weird. I feel like I have absolutely no energy whatsoever to chase after them, though I am actually able to chase them for a little bit. I go to call out, but I feel like I can't do that either, and suddenly my legs go weak, and everything starts to slowly go black now. 
and I'm seeing little stars and feel extremely weak, almost like I've just collapsed into myself. I'm there for a little while, in this weird void, when I'm awoken again. There's bright lights and medics, I'm in an ambulance. I slowly fade in and out of consciousness and then I wake up again in a hospital bed. I was so confused as to where I was and in so much pain. I tried to move and somebody quickly tells me not to and pushes me down. I ended up going to sleep and eventually wake up again, coming round. Then I quickly find a nurse rushing over to me, trying to help me, giving me some water. I say what happened, she said, you had surgery, you got attacked. I then look at her, really confused, I don't know whether this is a real situation or just a figure of my imagination, but hearing the beeping sound of monitors around me and realising there's other patients here suddenly sobers me up. I say, but what happened? She says someone stabbed you while you were at work. That friend of yours called the police for you and come looking out, couldn't figure out where you'd gone. You had to have surgery. You almost bled out. I then ask her, did I punch back? What happened? She says I don't know, you're gonna have to wait for the cops to arrive. Your friend's gonna visit soon. That's all she says that she's able to tell me. She doesn't know much else, so I'm stuck there. Absolutely in another planet. I can't believe what I'm hearing. It almost didn't feel real just coming from her, so I waited. I waited and waited for what felt like forever then eventually my buddy shows up with some flowers and chocolates and some candies i loved he comes over and hugs me and says man i didn't think you're gonna make it with tears in his eyes i say but what happened he said well i come back from the store and couldn't find you i knew something was off and i don't know i just felt it in my soul i went out there and i could see that you'd went over to the bridge And that's where I saw the weirdo, so I headed out there, had my rifle and everything ready. I eventually found a pool of blood and a trowel of blood and you collapsed on the floor. I dragged you back into the station and called the police. They're out there searching for whoever done this to you. You got stabbed pretty bad, man. I didn't think you were going to make it as he starts crying again. I just hug him and I'm so grateful. I'd never been so grateful for the air that I breathed, to be able to see things and hear, and just everything, but I was in so much pain. Now the road from there was a long, long recovery. It took me forever, and I actually still have scar tissue there which can really hurt me to this day. I'm not quite sure whether they actually found him or not. I basically immediately moved to a different country where my parents lived and was able to sell my house. I was able to more than thank my friend for it, but it's a horrible experience. I don't know if any of what happened to me was linked with my other job, working there in the store, but I think it might have been. So I, a 13 year old male, and a couple of friends, let's call them E, D, Z, S, and G, went exploring this farm last year. It is creepy, We found two knives, one old working toy in the attic and some other weird stuff. First time, nothing too weird, but it gives me the creeps. Next time, last summer at the start of autumn, my two friends E and D went to check it out and see what they could do. It didn't go as planned. They saw a white man-like creature in the barn and one outside who was actually spying from the bush. They ran for their bikes and... They watched the creature do some, I don't know what, not really normal activity. Now for the second encounter, it was like around two weeks ago since I got injured mid-autumn and basically couldn't do anything during the winter. We went there to do random stuff and mess around like 13 year olds do and search the barn. Things were a little misplaced, nothing new. After that, we go to check out the nearby forest at about 6pm and it's dark outside now. We go by the forest and look inside and we hear something, some gibberish, I don't know, 
we watch because we're obviously scared and it creeps me out to see some white creatures running around. We ran like 40 meters away and watched. Something came out of there and shouted. Don't know if we should go back or explore or not. Does anyone know anything similar happening elsewhere? One summer, my boyfriend and I drove up and down California and just slept in the bed of his truck. One day, we went to the Emerald Pools near Lake Tahoe. We ended up crashing near a public campground nearby. There was maybe about one other person or so, as well as a campground host. In the middle of the night, I woke up and had a weird feeling. I sat up and realized that the passenger side of the door had suddenly swung open. Now we'd locked ourselves in and it shouldn't have been able to do that. So we quickly close it and go asleep, but I'm creeped out for the rest of the night and I'm not able to sleep at all. It was literally like somebody swung the door open, but nobody had touched it and it was locked. While stationed in a protected forest, I remembered sitting up with a few of my buddies having some coffees when we saw somebody wave to us, turn and literally walk through a tree, then literally disappear only moments after. None of us can explain what happened. Now for a little bit of a backstory. I've always had weird experiences, be it ghosts or strange animals. It just always seemed to follow me and my family. We had just moved into an old farmhouse just off the main road. The house comes with 88 acres of land and only four people live on or near the land, including us. When we first moved in, nothing abnormal happened. It was just a small out of the way home that seemed like a new start for all of us. After about a month of us living here, we started hearing strange noises outside at night, but nothing serious. One night, we decided to have a fire and get drunk, while me and a few other guys that were there that night decided to do some night fishing. So we're fishing in the pond basically and we start to hear some screaming off in the woods. We just think that it's one of the girls back at the house, so we head back on our way and started noticing that there's no more sounds. No sounds of nature, no birds, no crickets, nothing, so we stop to listen. As we do this, we hear the sounds of chains rushing towards us as it gets maybe 15 feet in front of us. I point a gun out where I think the sound has stopped, and fire is shot into the ground a couple of inches from it. After a minute passes, the chains rush to the house, but nothing happened. After that, we all go inside and start heading to bed. We all then hear a female scream again, but behind it, there was a deep distorted laugh. After that, nothing happened until three weeks later, me and my dad go fishing out at the pond late in the afternoon. As it inches closer to dusk, we notice three pale white animals on the opposite side of the pond, but as soon as we notice the animals, we realise that they're running on all fours, but in a weird way, and they jump up on their hind legs and jump about 8 feet into a tree and then hop away from tree to tree. As we see this, we decide to head back home, but on the way we hear the trees start rustling and it keeps getting closer and closer until we just get to the house and lock the doors. I decide to set up cams in the woods and around the house. At first I don't get anything, just deer and wolves, until on a night cam close to the house I realised that there's a camera that's moved on its own. Nothing really came of that one night, however. After a long day of working, I decide to play a video game with some friends. It's about 11 at night and I hear two taps but I ignore them thinking it's a game. It continues till 2 in the morning, periodically every 5 minutes or so. Two consecutive taps are happening. I finally took off my headphones and hear it at my window and when I look, I see orange eyes about 7 feet off the ground after 2 minutes of staring at each other. It moves closer to the window and smiled at me with bloodstained daggers for teeth. 
Its face looks like a pale wolf's face with some decay on the sides of its neck and head. After doing this, it backs away and leaves. Now every night, right around that time, something weird happens like the sounds. I don't know what it could be. I'm always hearing this horrifying laugh like some kind of demented hyena or something. I'll let you guys know if anything else happens, I just can't figure out what this is. I currently work as a park ranger and you do get some odd things happening but I'm not somebody who's been blessed with a terrible experience. I say blessed sarcastically here, however I did have some strange things happening to me when I was younger and long before I ever took up this occupation. Let me take you back to my childhood. My father was somebody who went hunting often. I can remember so many nights up in the tree stands with my dad. These are really some of the best times that I ever had in my life. Even now, from time to time, I find myself reminiscing and looking back on them, just thinking of how great it was. I know not everybody has the ability to experience things like this, so it was something that I'm truly grateful for. I remember while we were up there one time, there's a really weird smell that comes. It was kind of like a really foul smell, like something was rotten. My dad's pretty convinced that an animal's died around here, and he says, you know what that means, son? We're gonna find something. Some animal's gonna come past it, and we're gonna get it. I was really excited. My dad has a rifle in its case, so he had a really expensive one. I can't remember exactly what gun he had, though, but it was a pretty cool one, just know that. So we're up there for a while, and not too much is happening. To be honest, I think either the smell gone or we got used to it, because I can't remember smelling it much more. We wait for a while here, then I see something. There's some kind of movement up ahead. I go to wake up my dad worried that a person's come but he's fast asleep. I don't think too much of it and decide to fall asleep again. Now you're not really supposed to sleep up here but we were both really tired from the hike so I thought it was only going to be like it for a little while. Just as I fall asleep, I can see what appears to be two people standing next to each other watching us where we are. I thought well maybe there are other hunters and I just had the benefit of the doubt in my head that it was all okay. So I fall asleep and I hear a really strange sound. It sounds like constant tapping like somebody was trying to break a lock. I'm really disorientated when I woken up and I actually thought that I was at home so I thought we were being robbed in the downstairs area of our house. You know when you're not used to sleeping somewhere and it takes you a few seconds to figure out where you are when you wake up? Well it was just like that and it takes me a while to get used to this. However, after not too long I quickly come back to my senses and I look out and I can see a figure walking around very slowly in the distance. It was weird though, it looked like it was moving in slow motion. This person had a massive torso but quite skinny arms just kind of lumbering around. It looks almost like they're injured and I say, Dad, Dad wake up. Dad, I think someone's trying to rob us. I was still a little bit hazy. My dad says, no son, it's nothing, just go back to sleep. I say, Dad, yeah, th there's definitely something there. He says, no, son, just go back to sleep, it's fine. Now, I don't know what was wrong with my dad. He just seemed very tired and dismissive of everything I was saying. Maybe it was because of my age at the time that he didn't really believe me or whatever, but he decides to go to sleep again, and eventually I do the same. Now, I slept really well that night. I think it was because I'd been woken up a few more times than my dad had, so... I didn't really get into a good circadian rhythm. Now when I do wake up, I see my dad outside looking around. I say, dad, what's wrong? And I go down off of the stand. I feel a million dollars because of how I slept. My dad looks confused. I say, what's wrong? And he says, well, there's something weird here. The animals that we caught and killed, they've all long gone. 
and I can't figure out where. It was quite weird because then we noticed something really odd. There was a pile of bones, but they were bone dry. It was almost like somebody had just really perfectly preserved the bones, which appeared to be like the animals that my dad had caught earlier, and just left them in a small neat pile. There was also the smell again, which was even worse than before. I had a look around for a while on my own to try and figure out if there was an animal that had died. I don't know, maybe a bear or something crazy like that, but there was nothing. I remember seeing a look of concern in my dad's face. I've never really seen this before. I've always looked up to my dad as being this very brave person, but on this particular day, he didn't look so confident. I don't know what it is. So then we head back. Now, my dad decides to take a walk by the water of the lake near where we are. He usually does this if he's stressed and that he wants to just have a walk and trying to relax and forget about everything. I start questioning my dad and he says that I'm sorry, I just don't know what it was. It's clear that he's definitely concerned, but he doesn't want to tell me what it was. Now, the place we are actually looks beautiful. If any of you have ever played Halo before, and went to the beaches there on the mongooses or the warthogs, you'll know what I mean. Where it's got kind of like the lovely rock formation that leads to the ocean. It was just like that up here. I'm actually having a really good time. But I realised the smell was very distinct that I smelt earlier. And it's again like something that I've never smelt before. There were some other people here and someone that my dad was actually friends with who had some dogs and stuff. The guy then says to my dad that he doesn't know why, but the dogs are acting really weird. He said he's never seen them act like it before. I think my dad's going to say about what he saw and what happened, but he doesn't really say anything. He just turns to his friend and said, well, be careful out there, buddy. And they shook hands and just start talking about other things. The other kid there wanted to play with me, but he was a bit younger and I wasn't in the mood for it. I could sense something could happen that hadn't before to my dad, and I didn't necessarily sense danger from it, I just felt like it was a bit surreal. Because I'd just gone from that relatively scary experience to looking out on a beautiful water formation, and it did actually relax me. The thing was, we had a few more days where we needed to remain here. Our original plan was to spend quite a while out here and just go back every so often to get supplies. That wasn't an issue. I decided to explore the rock formation a bit more on my own. It was quite sunny now, and actually annoying because I didn't have my hat with me. I realised that I've lost my camouflage hat. I was pretty crushed by this because I loved those things, but that was fine. I was now looking for crabs and other things, and I noticed some weird shells. That's when I noticed that one of the dogs starts going crazy. It just wouldn't stop barking. The owner's constantly calling his name, but he doesn't respond, so he has to put him back onto a leash. Again, I think this is quite a weird thing, because I've not seen this dog behaving like this before. And that's when I hear it. Some kind of terrifying crackling laugh, or maybe howl, very deep in nature. And it makes everything stop. All the animals, including the birds, seem to just stop in their place at the sound. It was like they knew something was up, and we didn't, or at least we didn't know the scale of it. My dad and his friend just looked at each other and agreed it was weird, like maybe a bear or something, but I think in his mind he knew it wasn't a bear, being quite experienced out here. I was quite scared of it being a bear, but luckily we're armed and our guns can take on bears luckily, but I didn't really want to put it to the test. My dad's friend decides to get out of there with the dog spooked, and now it's just me and my dad out here. We spent a while actually along the coast just exploring before deciding to eventually head back again. I asked my dad what do you think that thing was and he says uh, probably nothing, seeming much more calm now. I think in my head hold on, why are you telling me that now? You looked so scared earlier. That's weird. but. I guess my dad was a bit arrogant, and I thought, well, we're probably safe out here. So we start heading back to our camp again. 
We just eaten some food, so our bellies are full, and I guess that made us feel better. But I couldn't figure out why my dad wasn't too worried. I mean, if there was a bear, we didn't want to be out here with it. We'd probably win the fight, but who wants to test that? It was strange. As we are walking, and we now transition from kind of the beachy setting almost back into the woods, there was that strange smell once more. It was almost like every so often you'd get peppered with it. The thing was, this time it almost made me feel lightheaded. I can't be certain it was because of the smell, but it was definitely odd. But we continued on. My dad said that he wants to actually go to another stand that he knows about now. I asked him what do you think that is and he says, well son, there's a lot of things we know about in this world and out in nature, but there's a lot of things that we don't know. We're only a part of this, not above it. Even now I think of that saying actually, it's really interesting, though I couldn't entirely grasp the depth of it at the time. So we're heading back, and every so often, I do get the feeling like we're not alone out here. Yes, there could have been other hunters and things, but I didn't think that was too realistic. I keep looking over at the water and the lake every so often. I then see it, though. Once more, someone's there. It's just like the figure I'd seen before. My dad stares at it for a while, struggling to see it. I say, Dad, get the binoculars, quick. He can't find them. We've left them in the stand, which is really annoying. I say, we'll just use a rifle. No. Come on, Dad, just do it. We're going to figure out what this is now. My dad refuses once again, saying, no, we don't know who that is. I'm not going to aim the rifle at anyone. He had a really good point, but I don't understand why he couldn't have just took the scope off or something to have a look at this thing. He does seem to keep the gun pointed towards it though, which I thought again is really odd. Now it's there for a while, just staring at us. It kind of looks like a lost person on the beach, very far away, but potentially looking in our direction or that of the ocean. It's impossible to tell because of the distance between us, but it was definitely looking somewhere. Now we continue on, and that's when we start to notice some weird things. There are some trees which are pushed down which should never have been. It's not all the time, just every so often. At first I think maybe it was a lightning strike or something, but upon closer investigation I realised that there's no burn marks at all. I'm not sure if we should be out here, but for whatever reason, my dad decides to persist that we need to get back to the other stand. We're walking for what feels like an eternity and eventually stop for a little while just to have a break. It's while doing this that I actually calm down a bit further and we walk onto a little wooden part which is man-made which made me feel a lot better. We've set up our food now and we have another meal. I seem to be especially hungry. I think it's probably because I was more nervous than I realised and that might have been burning up a lot of energy, but everything felt different here. It felt like we were going to a completely foreign land, like we just moved to a completely different area of the forest, almost like somebody just cut and pasted a different terranium into here. The trees all seem to be somewhat haunted looking, not full of life like the other ones. But seeing those wooden paths made me feel more confident. And with this, we get to the other stand, and we head up in there. My dad lets me go first. He then says that he's going to look around for a while to try and scout out anything for us to hunt. I say good idea, Dad. He leaves me there and I actually have a rifle too now. He didn't often trust me with one, but in this situation he did. We've got two, both which go into the same case. My dad always carried it because it was quite heavy. I was pretty good with it actually and spent lots of time at ranges and places like that which were privately owned so I really honed my skills in. I knew how to operate it safely but this was a big thing. I remembered staring at the gun with wide eyes thinking wow I don't want to let my dad down. I put it onto its safety mode and just sat there quite peacefully for a while. 
I remembered that after not too long, I drifted off to sleep again. I mean, I didn't realise how tired I could get so easily, but this was different for me. It was honestly like my body was put under a spell or something. Now while up here, I notice a strange screamy sound again. It jolts me awake and I try and focus my eyes on what it was. I shouldn't have done it, but I grab the rifle and load up a round. Now, I'm looking through the scope trying to see what it was. I don't actually have my hand towards the trigger though. I know this is dangerous and stupid, but I was quite young, so I didn't really care. Then, just through the edge of my sights, I can see something. Standing making this horrible howling sound. It appears to be standing over the corpse of some kind of animal, and I'm certain that I can see blood dripping down off of it. Every so often, it would stop making the sound where it appeared to be eaten, but I can't be 100% sure. I say, Dad? Dad? And I can't find my dad. Then, I hear it, a ping, a loud bang. The rifle's gone off. God, I think, as I drop the gun in front of myself, then quickly grab it again. I quickly check to see if the rounds went off, but it hasn't. It wasn't my own. Then, I realise that it's my dad's shot around. I say, Dad, Dad. I don't hear any response, so I start panicking, thinking it's somebody else. I look up towards wherever that creature is, and there's nothing there. I then see my dad come in. He's pointing his rifle in that direction the whole time, and eventually makes it up into the stand. I say, Dad, where did you go? What happened? He says, well, I thought someone was following us so I decided to have a scout around. Eventually I saw it, some kind of, I don't know what it was, standing over an animal, I tried to hit it, but I missed. I now realise that they were warning shots, so... Whatever it is is now long gone, but it was definitely weird. I keep asking my dad again and again, can we go and check it out please, I really want to see what it is, but my dad refuses. He actually puts up the barrier on the stand now. We're able to use it to rest our guns on though, which is good. He then explains that he doesn't know what's happening in the woods and that he wants us to go a bit sooner than normal. I was quite hesitant because I loved these times, but I understood. He then said, why did you put a round in? And I explained that I saw the thing too. He said, what do you think it was, son? And I say, I don't know, but it was eating something. And that's what my dad agrees with too. So we set away for the night. When I wake up, I can see my dad looks a bit restless. He was never one who slept for very long, and I can see he's a bit tired today. I ask him why is he sleepy, and he said he couldn't sleep well, but I think that he was just up on guard. So, now we head out again towards where the water is, just to wash off our things and whatnot, and just to relax a little bit. After not long of being down there, we bump into another person. This person looks quite weird though. He isn't dressed normally. He's kind of dressed like how the folks that live out of nature on their own do. He's got some kind of wooden tent, whatever it is, set up near the water on the rocks. I go over and try and speak to him and ask has he seen anything and he says, yeah, there's weird things out here, man. There's all kind of squatches and everything. They don't know about it, man. I felt nervous immediately. He's definitely a weird one. And my dad comes over and starts trying to talk to him. The guy just says over and over again and again, you gotta watch yourself, man. There's things out there. There's things out there. My dad says, where are you from and how long have you been out here? And he says he doesn't know. It's clear this guy hasn't come into contact with people for quite a long time. He was probably the strangest fellow that I'd met in my life up to that point, and it felt weird. Again, the atmosphere seemed to change as we come over to the water. He was really weird looking, and my dad takes me away from him. We cut our little respite short and start walking along the shoreline. I'm actually looking for crabs and things again because I want to eat one, but there are none. My dad starts laughing, and I do saying about how weird that guy seemed to be. It's really like that guy had just come out of the middle of nowhere and just appeared. 
almost like he was dropped there by a helicopter or something and hadn't seen normal people for years. It was weird. I then asked my dad, do you think he saw the same thing we did? But he says, I don't know, I think he's seen everything, but it's not real. That was the only time I started to settle down really on this trip. We started to wonder if maybe that guy was dressing up in some kind of weird animal suit and acted strange out there. I think my dad was more worried that he potentially shot near a person, but I don't know. We then come up to another part where the forest starts. We're going to head back to the original stand now. It looks very Halo-y again, like I said before, but it looks kind of cool. After not too long, we start heading back into the forest once more. Okay, I go on and on though about my dad, that I want to go back and see what that thing was. Come on, let's go and figure out what it was, dad. Don't you want to see what it was? I keep on persisting like that annoying child, trying to just figure out exactly what that animal was. Who knows what it could have been, but my dad says no, we're not gonna go. I was annoyed because the direction that we're heading basically takes us really far away from it and I don't want that. But my dad just refuses actually getting annoyed now and I said alright fine, fine, just because you don't want to solve the mystery. I think my dad's mindset was more survival and protective, but mine was more like that of a young person that I was. So just trying to investigate everything and just see what was truly out there. Now we continue on. The sun's shining quite nicely, but the trees are luckily providing lots of shade for us at this point. So it's very nice to be out there in the woods and nature. My dad actually looks like he was losing some kind of weight, so I think that's a pretty good sign that he was as nervous as anybody at that point. So he keeps on going and eventually we get nearer to the stand and that's when we hear it, a very loud scream. This one is very classical of what you'd expect from a large animal, but it doesn't sound like a bear. So that leaves me with the question, what could it have been if it wasn't a bear? What could have been making such a loud sound out there, really in the middle of nowhere? I don't know, but we keep going once more. After about five or so minutes, we come up to where the stand is, and the place looks trashed at the bottom. My dad seems annoyed, saying, God, what are these other hunters doing? You're not supposed to trash it like this. No one is. But that's when it gets weird. There are some markings on the trees, like something with large claws has had a go at it. Now it seems like somebody's really had a chance to hack down the tree. Maybe Wolverine, I don't know. That's honestly what it appears like. I really think this is really weird, because there's no signs of trash or anything that would make it apparent or obvious that a person has actually been here. It's really bizarre to see. I even had a scout round myself trying to look for something or signs of anybody else being out here. I thought maybe somebody gone for a walk and was getting annoyed that they couldn't use the stand or something. But it's weird. I remembered faintly thinking I could smell that smell again, but I seem to be completely used to it now, so I guess I was kind of nose blind to it if it was actually there. My dad decides to do some exploring though and tells me once again to wait up in the stand, gives me some snacks to eat and hands me a rifle. Wow, this is so cool I think to myself. I'm mesmerised once again, where I was being trusted with the gun. Again, something that seldom happened for me, so things are looking up a bit now. I remembered looking at the thing, holding it and just having to play around, trying to remember everything, and I started practicing reloading quickly. There wasn't much else I could do, so that's what I'm doing time and time again. Then, I suddenly stop. I had a feeling that I should stop now, and just wait for a few seconds. I hold my breath as I hear some kind of movement. I can't hear much else. It doesn't sound like my dad. The movement is coming through the trees and seemingly getting closer and closer to where I am up in that stand. I hold my breath now. It's already starting to get dark. 
since when did it get dark so quickly? Why is it so dark here? I think to myself as I try and figure out what's going to happen next. My hands are now trembling as I get the rifle ready to shoot whoever's coming. Then I hear a loud sigh and sneeze. The sneeze was loud enough to make me jump. It's my dad. My dad has the loudest sneeze in the world so I knew it was definitely him. I then swear and tell my dad off for making me jump. I say, why are you being so quiet? He says, I just have a feeling that there's something else here. He says, you weren't going to shoot me, were you, as a joke? And I said, no, of course not. But my God, I probably wasn't far away from it. It's something I'm kind of ashamed of now. I let my fear take over. But how could I not in that moment? My dad eventually comes up in the stand and he has some chocolate with him. I immediately forget about everything and start munching on the chocolate. I think my dad's maybe trodden some kind of animal remains, and we do look around for a bit. I'm trying to see if I've got it on my shoes, but I don't, and my dad doesn't. It's a really bad smell. This is different from the one we had before. As the night falls this time, a mist settles, making it look like it's kind of from a different time of the year to what we were. I haven't seen mist like it before too, maybe that's why the smell was carrying so far. Maybe animals were dying and we didn't know why. They seems to be dying all around us, it was weird. Well I didn't dwell on this for too long. I eventually finished the chocolate and we decided to settle in for the night once more. We're up for hours and we do not see anything whatsoever. It's really annoying because we're going to have to come back empty handed. I don't understand where all the animals went that my dad found earlier. They seem to have just vanished, it's really odd. We decide that when we're going to go to sleep that we should put the tarp up this time. It's something that we rarely did but it was a bit more cold now so it felt better that way and we do so and we set a whim for the night. Now I'm awoken by rattling on the side of the tarp. That's bizarre. For a few seconds I thought it was my dad, but I look to my left and my dad's up, aiming the rifle. Now panic sets in and my dad says, don't move a muscle, in a hushed tone. Something is now sniffing the outside of the top, trying to get in. What's crazy is it sounds like it goes to the outside of where we are. We're up a tree, how on earth could that thing have got on the other side? It would have meant this thing's impossibly tall or has freakishly long arms as we hear the odd tap on the side, sometimes more aggressive. There was one point where part of the wood actually bent in towards us, then relaxed again. I thought the whole thing was about to come down. This continues on and I grab my rifle too and start aiming it too. Now this goes on for at least three minutes where something is trying to get into where we are and then suddenly it just stops we hear the sound of something going down from the ladder in the side of the tree it hits the ground and then we don't hear anything that's a weird part we can't figure out what direction this went in my dad then slowly peeks down and around from the top he slowly aims it from the left and then to the right. I can see that he's sweating a lot now. He says, son, wait here. I say, dad, no, you're crazy. He says, son, stop. I'm not actually going out. I thought that he was going to get out, but he's just putting his head out, basically. I decide to aim my rifle in the opposite direction. I don't know what that thing was. The smell is absolutely appalling at this point. It smelt like a thousand dead things rolled into the size of a bathtub that had just been dropped on top of our stand. That's when we realise there's blood dripping from the top of it. At first I'm worried it's my dad but I realise it's not him. I notice it's not myself too. But it's kind of a dark colour, it's not like any other blood that I've seen before. Luckily none of it gets on us. Then my dad slowly gets down. He has a look around and I go to do the same but he sends me back up. He then says, son, 
grab your stuff. I start to collect everything together and I slowly walk down the steps in the moonlight. It looks like the tree has been destroyed. It literally looks like wolverines climbed up the side of it. But there's something which is dead, clearly, on the top of our stand. You can see maybe a deer's leg or something covered in blood. You can see its own blood, but then another much darker kind next to it. It's hard to say because we're in the moonlight, but I don't know what this thing is. My dad then says come, and he tells me to lead the way. I can't believe he's trusting me out of here, but he's telling me basically to head back to where safety is, back to the main area. He's going to cover behind us, and we start walking. At first I'm going slow, but my dad says, son, you've got to go quick here. He didn't have to tell me twice as I pick up the pace myself. We start going now, back to back. We're walking for a long time. The smell doesn't seem to leave us so, which is especially odd. I hear a strange echoey voice too every so often. It's very faint, but it sounds like a wounded animal, kind of making some kind of cries as it slowly passes away. It's really haunting. Especially with just the moonlight here, but eventually it gets brighter and brighter, and we continue like this for literally hours. Neither of us really said much. I turned into a soldier on a mission now. My arms are getting tired though from holding the rifle, and eventually I put it down for a second and my dad picks it up, putting it in the case and shouldering it. He's still got his one. He obviously felt a lot more safer now at this point as we keep making our way through the woods. We're doing this forever when eventually my dad says okay and puts the rifle back. He's got both of them in the same case now. He says we can't be out here pointing rifles around in case anybody else comes. And we walk for probably another three or so hours. We've literally been walking for miles and miles now and we're slowly getting closer and closer to where we can get the rest of the way home. We eventually get back to my dad's car and we throw everything in. I somehow knew not to say anything to my dad and he slowly starts up the car and we head home in silence. We have since spoke about the incident many many times and both of our stories of what happened match up exactly. Even the drawings of what we both saw are basically identical. Now, my dad made me promise not to tell anybody else about what had happened, and I didn't really for a long time. Neither of us could figure out what happened to us this day. The closest thing that either of us can think of is if it was some kind of deranged bear or Sasquatch, but the bear theory doesn't seem to make sense. They're not really known for the area that we went in, and I don't see how it could have put something on top of our stand like that. I don't know what it is. Sometimes when I fall asleep and hear a loud sound, it really takes me back to that moment. I don't like it. Growing up, I'd spent much of my life playing outside with my friends. This is in the days before you had video games and things like that, so it was pretty normal to make your own fun. All I'd have to do is take my bike and after riding for about an hour or so, I'd be with my friends. I know that sounds like a long time, but I lived out in the backwoods miles away from cars, so it wasn't really dangerous and it didn't feel so long because you're out in the woods. Now, later in my career, I become a park ranger, so I kind of got used to weird people and weird situations, but this is something that I couldn't explain from my childhood. Now, this actually comes from a number of things that happened to me, which all led to one specific event. So let me begin. So, I was playing out with my friends on one particular day, and one of my friends swears that 
He's seen a house out in the woods, deep deep in the middle of nowhere, but he knows exactly where it is. And he says, God, there's a woman that haunts it and it's so scary. I really need you guys to see it. Now we knew he wasn't making it up because when his brother came back from vacation, he was also saying the same thing. So one day we set out to find this. We had our bikes with us originally but had to quickly dismount them. We decided to leave them because we knew it was going to be too difficult to proceed. There were rocks and things everywhere so it was going to be really a headache to travel with them. So we decided not to. Now we do notice some people further up also on bikes. And one, we have no idea how that they could have been on bikes out here because of how rough the train is. And two, we've seldom seen people here so we thought it was a pretty bizarre thing but we don't think too much of it and continue on. Now finally, this friend almost immediately gets lost and can't figure out where it is. He's basically adamant to not give up on trying to find it, but he doesn't really have a clue of where he's going. The nature's very nice though, but we're on quite a narrow path which is quite sheer. If you fell, you wouldn't really break anything, but you'd definitely get hurt. I've actually had the honour of falling in once and it wasn't fun. I ended up getting quite a lot of cuts and things and messed up some of my clothes which was quite annoying. Now after not too long, my friend finally gives up and says that uh, we're not going to find this place. I say yeah that's fine and we decide to start heading back. Now I kid you not, just as we've started to turn around, we hear a really deep banshee type scream, one that echoes off the surrounding hills. It was far too loud to be a person, at the very least it would have been a large animal but upon listening to the scream over the two seconds it lasted you could hear some distinct words being spoken and that was to get out it's very hard to really figure out exactly what this voice was saying because i had so much adrenaline that i just couldn't focus on what i was hearing but i look at my friends and my friend who then let us out there confirmed that yes he actually heard the same thing now we're panicking. As you can imagine, being young kids we basically scream too and sprint out in the opposite direction. The best part about this is that we don't really know where we're going and we ended up getting more lost in the woods. Now I ended up getting really bad because it starts to get dark and one, I don't want to lose my bike. My parents have only just got me it and growing up I really didn't have much money. So if I lost the bike it was going to be a big thing, but yeah I really couldn't find it and that was quite worrying. And two, I didn't want to be out here in the dark with the demon. And my parents were going to kill me if I wasn't back in time. Filled with more rage now, I start strutting around trying my very best to find where the bikes could be and thankfully we found them. Now we all split off in our different directions and none of us really say anything. We're just rushing to try and get back home. I've never pedalled so hard in my life because I was absolutely convinced that the demon thing was going to chase after me. I know now it could have just been a person out there or maybe a large animal. That was probably the biggest threat but I guess back then you really don't think like that. So I was pretty concerned by this and I well and truly didn't feel comfortable. I just knew that I had to find my way home safely. So I get in and I get banned from being on my bike for a while, which was really annoying. I didn't really explain what had happened to my parents, I just, I knew I was going to be grounded and I thought, you know what, this is going to be a lot worse for me if I say what's actually happened. I know looking back on it now, I should have probably explained because it could have been a really dangerous situation. Who knows what was out there that day? Well, I'll tell you who doesn't know, me. So now fast forward a couple of months. My friend is still going on about us trying to find this place. And I kind of didn't want to this time. Normally I'm one of the real adventurers in the group but I just couldn't be bothered. I didn't want to lose my bike luxuries again because I've just lost them but 
he persists and I guess we had nothing better to do so I say sure. Now I remember the day that we're gonna set off again. He said that he knows the exact place this is. You know why? He said he had a dream about it. Being young I really bought into this and thought you know what this time we're actually gonna find it. So we're riding down the path this time. We're actually on the more concrete area which leads into the main part of the forest and we were going really quick. Next thing I know, I'm hitting the ground hard. My hands are stinging and something was off. I realised that I've crashed on my bike. I stupidly tried to go off onto what appeared to be a more flat part of the path but I've gone straight over a big stone and end up getting some cuts on myself. I didn't worry too much about it though. I was sat down for a while and I tell my friends that they should just go on without me and that I need to get back home. I was young but I was still quite concerned by this and ruining my clothes. I didn't want to get blood all over them. I know I have to get back to my mum. Now my friends being the great friends they are say sure and then head off without me and leave me there. I look at the bike and it seems a little bit stuffed at first. I can't get the wheels to turn so I ended up just laying there for a while. Now that's when I noticed someone. There's an elderly woman approaching. She's coming from just beyond the tree line up to my right. I look ahead and see if my friends are there to confirm if they're seeing this too but they aren't. They're long gone. I'm a little bit worried now and very hastily get off and start trying to make my bike move. I'm trying to get the wheels to work but I just can't seem to do it. For some reason I had a feeling that she was coming to help me, but she gets a little bit closer and just stops smiling at me. Now she has some of the most jagged and rotten teeth that I've ever seen before. It's like this person had never seen a toothbrush in their life. Weirdly, their clothes didn't seem too dirty considering that she's just come from the forest and surely they should have some markings on them. She's wearing a kind of dark coloured dress but it looks pretty immaculate. If I had to guess her age, I'd say she's probably about 70 or 75, I'm not too sure. I wave at her and don't get anything back. I then say hello and suddenly her expression changes looking completely blank, almost like it's looking through me. Now that was creepy. I can't really make out much about her eyes because she has pretty bloodshot eyes so I quickly get my bike, pick it up and thankfully the wheels start moving while I'm walking. I look over my shoulder and I can still see her there watching me. For some reason I wasn't overwhelmed with fear by this as I know a lot of people might be. This is kind of uncharacteristic for me too because often I am the scaredy cat but not in this situation. I start pedalling slowly at first but I then see that she's still there staring at me and as you can imagine I picked up the pace pretty promptly. Now I ended up getting back home and my mum's very concerned about me. Annoyingly she put this stinging stuff all over my cart so I mean it's probably antiseptic whatever but my god did it burn like I've never felt a burn before. Honestly it almost sent my whole body into shock how strong this stuff is. It was so much so that I'd actually forgot about what had happened until my mum asked again. I say I crashed over the stone and then the lady come. My mum says what lady and asks me to describe her. And I explain everything that happened and she looks at me kind of weird. She knows that there's no cars around there for miles, it's just the paths. You might get the odd truck but it was very uncommon. She tells me that if ever I see that lady again, to come straight back and don't try and talk to her. I say, but mum, I couldn't even talk to her. I get the reply of, I don't want to hear it. I'm then grounded and lose my bike privileges again. So it's starting to get quite irritating now. So not only are my friends out having this great adventure, I've crashed my bike on flat ground, hurt myself and got grounded again. 
I was pretty worried now because usually my mum does a three strikes and you're out kind of way of things. I lose a bike again, I don't know if I'll see it again. So I'm pretty upset. Now eventually my mum does release me from her prison and I'm allowed to go out. And I catch up with my friends and ask them what happened. They then say that they still couldn't find it and I started laughing. They then ask why I'm not allowed on my bike and I explain and my friend says that's her. That's the lady who lives there. I say what do you mean? He says the lady that haunts the house, you saw her. And I'm not buying any of it. I say the day I believe you is the day I see the house. And what happens? Nothing for the next two months. Until eventually I get my bike back and it's time to go out once more. In the time without my bike, I'm actually super bored because I'm basically stuck indoors all day and I'm just watching the days go past. I did get some video games then, so I just killed hours on it, but it couldn't compete with being with my friends. Now, we decide that we're going to set out one last time to try and find this house. Again, I really don't believe it's there. I don't believe any of it's true, but my friend constantly goes on about it. So now, we get on that path once again, and this time I'm constantly scanning the ground. I'm very scared to go over another rock again and get hurt. It's not actually the feeling of crashing that actually bothers me, it's more the fact that I don't want to have a crash and get that stinging stuff on me. The thing was, at this point, even if we did find anything, I was sure to just lie about it. Because I think, what's the point of telling my mom about what's happened if I'm only going to get grounded again? So I swear that no matter what happens, I'm not going to tell her anything. Now we were riding for miles and miles, and eventually my friend said, stop. And we all stop. He says, leave our bikes here. We take them off to the side and actually throw them into the bushes so people can't find them. They're pretty well concealed now, which is something we're all happy about. Now we get up, and we start going through the woods on this little path. My friend is absolutely convinced and certain that this is the way that we need to go to be able to get away from everyone, and finally find where this house is. He says this is it, this is what I found before. None of us really believed him, but... I guess being gullible, part of us wanted it to be real. Now we walked for miles and miles, and we still don't seem to be getting any closer to anything. I tell him, really, is this actually a thing or is it just a figure of your imagination? He then says, be quiet. And I don't, I just keep on going until eventually, there it is. In a break in the trees, you can see an old white house. It kind of looked like an old English cottage, but slightly bigger. It certainly looked old, and very abandoned. It was two stories tall, and looked like nobody had been there for as long as I had been alive at least five times over. Now at this point, I get a little freaked out, but my friend is persistent that we have to press forward to find it. We have to go in there, we have to know that it's real. I agreed, kind of getting more and more excited at this time. As we start to step towards it, a crow must have broke out of a tree nearby and it really made us jump. All of my friends are laughing at me for being so scared, but I don't know, I felt extremely on edge in this situation and it's kind of like something I haven't felt before for a long time. Even working now as a ranger, I still haven't had that feeling. I think I was too on edge, I was too ready for something to happen. Now we go a little bit further ahead, and then, I can see some kind of movement. It almost looks like there's a cat or something in one of the top windows moving round. It's all black, I can't see eyes, but I knew something was in there. I think maybe it's an animal, and we continue going forward. I don't know, I'm getting a really bad feeling about this, one of my friends says. But again, we say that we've come this far and that we need to figure out what this is. And so we press forward even more. Now eventually we get up to where the door was. And I've probably been the bravest at the time decide to step in first. 
and this place smelled really weird. It was kind of like an old smell. One that I hadn't smelt before, and something smelt really bad in there. I didn't know what it was. I kept on and on searching for the source of the smell, but I really couldn't find anything. So that was something quite strange. I just expected either something to jump out at me constantly, or to see some kind of dead animal or thing there to make sense of the smell, but again, there's nothing. Now, I decide to go up the stairs to see what else is up there, and this place looks like it is from about the 1800s. There's no furniture or anything. There is a picture on the wall, but it's all faded off and you can't really see what it once was. I don't think it was a picture, but some kind of portrait, but it's gone now. I then see a big spider go up the wall and I really don't like that. I'm looking for the cat though and I can't find it. I think this is odd, so I continue my search. I was sure I saw something in here. Even if it wasn't a cat, I just had the urge to know exactly what it is and just figure out what was going on up here. Now, I end up going further ahead, and while my friends are down, I realise that there's an upstairs area. There are stairs that go up another level. I go up the stairs and I can see a suitcase. I don't see anything else there, and I decide that I'm going to open it up. I have to know what's in here. Even if it's bugs or something, I really want to know. As I go to open it, I hear a sound behind me. It's movement. I'm not bothered, I think that it's one of my friends, and I slowly turn around. And there I see it. A woman crouched in the corner, staring at me. I then realise this is a woman that I saw before. And she slowly smiles at me. I drop the suitcase down immediately. It startles me but not her. One of my friends then joins me on the stairs and screams the second he sees a woman. Something about her didn't look real or human. The next thing I know, we're sprinting down those stairs. They felt impossibly long. It was almost like it had doubled in length. My other friends were also screaming now and we all come flying out of the house saying, what was that? What on earth was that? I say I don't know, and we start explaining to the others what we saw. One of my friends is constantly looking around, and he swears that he can see someone staring at us out of the window. We don't bother looking around. I mean, me and the guy who saw it, we just keep running. We are surprisingly fit, as we probably made it about 500 meters before slowing down again. We all stop for a moment, now feeling safe that we're away from the house, saying, what did we see? No, none of us can agree on exactly what we saw. We keep looking around to where the house is, but weirdly we can't find it. I know that we've run off and we're quite worried and disorientated, but we should be able to see the house, so it doesn't make sense why it's not there. I start to kind of lurch backwards a bit as I realise that the fear's really taken a toll on me. It's like my vision's gone a bit weird. We then start moving again. We start running as quick as we can, and we're trying desperately to locate our bikes. We eventually come back to the main path, but our bikes are nowhere to be found. Of course not, how could we possibly find it out here? How are we going to be able to differentiate it from the surroundings when everything looks the same? We didn't think of this at the time. I didn't even care about the bike. Now the thing that makes this suck is it's going to be a long journey back without the bikes, but we just can't find them. I do want to search for a bit longer, but my friends are all too scared, and we take off running again. We don't get too far as we're really tired now, and we have to start walking. What's worse is we've got about two hours of daylight now ahead of us. We're all discussing running through the probabilities of what it was, and suddenly I get annoyed at the friend saying, why didn't you tell me that was there? He says, I can't know what's up there, I've never been in there before. We all look at him then, kind of annoyed, as if to say, well, why didn't you let us know that before? He doesn't reply though. And eventually, we get to the part where we have to split ways. We all say goodbye to each other, and then watch my friends go off in different directions. 
I don't know why, I just felt the need to stop there for a second or so, just to try and figure out or at least make sense of what had happened, but I can't really make sense of anything. I then think, God, my bike, my bike, this isn't good, I'm going to be in so much trouble. And I start to fabricate an excuse to my mum as to what's happened to my bike, so at least then maybe she won't be too annoyed at me. It was stolen, that's it, I'm going to tell her it was stolen. Eventually, after a two hour walk, I get home just before the sun set. My mum can see me without my bike and says what happened and it was stolen mum, I think a kid stolen it. Weirdly, she wasn't annoyed at all, she said oh, I'm sorry to hear that honey, we'll get you another one. Dinner's ready. I'm really surprised and I take my food and go and sit in my room to eat it. Now fast forward to all these years later. And even in my current line of work, I had never seen anything so strange, and I still can't really make sense of it all. I don't know what I could have possibly seen up there, I'm just glad that I wasn't the only person to have seen it, and somebody else did, because if it was just me, I probably wouldn't have believed it. When I grew up, I'd always play out with the same group of kids. We all went to the same school together. I didn't actually live on the same side of town as them. Basically, the area that I grew up in had one big road that went down the middle, and it kind of divided them off pretty nicely. It made it a little bit of a pain to get over to the other side because the crossings were really slow, but that wasn't too much of an issue. The side of which I grew up in probably wasn't the best out of the two sides, there also wasn't really that much to do here. It made me get bored quite quickly. This was just basically before there was really video games or you couldn't really play them online. So obviously you get quite bored and you didn't end up doing much else. The only way that you could get around was by using your pedal bike. I don't have an issue with this. I actually have quite a nice one and I was really happy for having it. At the time, my brother would come with me sometimes when we'd play. Basically, we'd just agree what time we wanted to meet up at and just call each other on the house phones and then go outside. So it was pretty common for me to make my way across to the other side of town to play with some of my friends and just hang out there and relax generally. You know, basically just have a good time together. These are pretty good days. I absolutely love going to the store to get the big bottles of Pepsi. This is when you had them in the glasses and I thought that was kind of cool. It was something that I always looked forward to. To be honest I'm not sure how that I didn't end up with diabetes because how bad my diet was. I just constantly ate bad food, but that was fine. While we were playing there, there was always rumours about some kind of weird house and some weird cave accompanying it that nobody could ever seem to locate. But we'd hear rumours about this off a few other people, and in fact actually some adults that warned us against going there. They said that, if you ever see the old burnt out house, or that cave, don't go into it. I mean firstly the way that you had to get there was through an area which flooded very often. When you walked through it, it honestly looked like an atomic bomb had hit the place, there was all kinds of downed trees and stuff over there. And all kinds of other things that you obviously couldn't move. It would actually make it a really dangerous cross into at the same time, which is one reason that you didn't really want to go there. They did have one log which had actually been cut down and made into some kind of bridge. The funny thing is it didn't have barriers though on either side so you could have easily fell. Not like the drop was very big, but I guess maybe in winter it could have been a lot more dangerous. However, we would so often go across there, and just have an explore. I mean, you know how it is, when you're young and you've got that inquisitive nature, then anything like this you kind of jump at, just to get out there and have some adventure. We were so bored other than this, I mean, we had some sports like baseball and stuff which we would play, but we didn't do it too often. Thing is, there wasn't that many places that we could go and play it really. Where I live, they had this really stupid habit of locking up everything really early. I mean, basically they'd close it a second that you'd got out of your school, and then it was dark, so there wasn't much you could do. 
The ones that were actually open also kind of had a way of attracting weirdos and dodgy people. You know like the people that just let their dogs run wild and chase absolutely everything and made no effort to call them back? Or just the drug dealers, just not a nice place. Especially not where you'd want to go when you were young, even though there was quite a big group of us. So anyway, we like coming to this place for a number of reasons, but the main one was just to get away from everything and just to have some fun together. We were always trying to look for that place though, but we could really never find it. We thought it was just rumours and that maybe this never existed. So we're all playing out here one day when one of us says, yeah, you know that cave? I think I know where it is. And basically we're following him. I actually had to bring my bike and so did a few others of us as we went further into the woods trying to locate it. It's not really easy to pass through here though to be honest because I don't know what they were but some kind of plants like you know the ones with the little thorns and stuff and the ones that sting you I don't know what they're called but they're on either side of us other than the big trees were the only thing that was safe from this so it wasn't very nice passing through here. Luckily I had long socks on so it didn't get my ankles but I knew some of my friends were suffering. They actually try and drive on their bikes through it, but it's too exhausting, so it wasn't really the best of places. But we had faith in him, and he keeps on leading us on this adventure. Now none of us were actually entirely convinced that he was going to be able to find it. I've heard so many stories of similar things off of other people before, saying that they've got a friend who can show them where something is and it doesn't come true. But I don't know. Just seeing the new scenery actually made it relatively interesting. It was kind of like bright but not too bright, if that makes sense. Like you know, not when the sun's setting but when it's cloudy and it's hard to tell exactly what time of day it was. Well it's just like that, but we keep on going. We do this for quite a long time and we don't really seem to be getting anywhere. We were going so far now. Well, eventually we come up to an area which is much more rocky. Oh my god, what if this guy's actually right? I seriously didn't know what I'd do if we actually found this place. I mean, I was going to be too scared to go in truthfully. I could already feel my little heart pounding, and I was actually nervous about this. I didn't want to let on to the others, but I remembered thinking to myself that what if we actually have to go in this cave? It's not like any of us had torches or lights or anything, so we're not going to be able to see too well. And we come up to a Y shape in the road. We can either go downhill or across some bridge. And my friend actually stops for a while telling us that, well, he can't quite remember what way it is. We kind of looked at each other confused. It actually didn't dawn on us at the time, but we're very lost now and we're gonna have an issue actually getting home if we're not careful. But, my friend would not stop going on about how that we're going the right way. So, we eventually decided to go across the bridge. The main reason for that is that it's easier for us to go across on our bikes when my friend stops. He says, hey, look at that. And he turns and sprints on the other way until he jumps on his bike and a few of the other guys all ride on their bikes trying to get out of there. Ah, <sighs> yes, they've played the abandonment trick on me. They've took me out here and they thought it would be funny just to ride off and just leave me on my own here. I could have easily caught up with them but I just couldn't be bothered. I don't know why, I just basically turned and watched them going away. So off they went. And I just sat there, just taking it all in for a minute. Now a lot of you might have thought that I was panicking, but I just wasn't for some reason. Now I was left with some kind of ultimatum. I had to either press on alone or just head back to the relative safety. And probably for the first time in my life, I decided to be brave. I think it felt kind of nice to be on my own out here. So I just start driving very slowly on my bike, going across the bridge. I was taking advantage of the fact that 
I could drive along some flat ground and not really have too many issues here, so I do so. I'm doing it for a while and I eventually come up to an opening with lots of rocks everywhere. This is great I think to myself, I'm now at a place where that I can ride my bike really easily, so I start doing so. I'd actually never really driven on rocky places like this before in my life, so I thought it was really cool to be able to do it on my bike. It looks really beautiful here. Now I've got some water on me, so every so often I'm just drinking that and periodically going to the toilet. I've probably drank too much water, but I like the fact that it's making my backpack less heavy. At the time I thought it could make me go faster. And I get up to an area that seems oddly familiar. I don't know why that is. I've not been here before, but I seem to know what way I'm going. I rest for a moment and notice something odd. There's some kind of markings on one of the rocks close to me. It kind of looks like if you draw stick figures with their hands up in a Y shape. There was about eight of these figures there then a much larger one further off, onto another rock. I think this is odd. I run my hand along it, and can see that it's been there for a while. It's clear that it's been pretty well weathered since it was first put there. And I think this is kind of cool. I've not really seen much like this. Then I get a fright as I turn around and I go off balance. My bike has kind of went out from underneath me, and I start falling with the bike. I'm still riding it, but I'm gaining momentum and my brakes don't seem to be working. This happens for probably about 10 seconds before I finally lose control and slam into a rock which throws me off my bike. I get up and I turn around and start panicking. My bike is ruined. My very front wheel has entirely broken it's really dented, almost as though that you've took a big sledgehammer and smashed it as hard as you can. And there was no way I was going to be able to use it, unless I become a tricycle expert. I was in big trouble now. My mum was going to kill me, she literally just brought me it. I love that bike so much. It took me a while to calm down from this actually, and I start telling myself that it's going to be okay. Just keep going, just keep going. So now, I continue on foot, which probably wasn't the best of ideas. But like I said, I seemed to know which way I was going. For some reason, I just instinctively knew that if I kept going down, I would probably get to this cave. That was weird. I sat there for a while, and I can see what I think is one more person near the mouth of where I think the cave might be, and then another appear. I'm actually really far away, but I decide just to stop and observe them. I really can't see. I try to cuff my hands to get a bigger view, or just to see what else is going on around myself and block out some of the sunlight, but it doesn't make much of a difference. So I just continue walking down the rocky trail. This is actually a welcome relief from the other area of which I was walking upon. It's a lot easier traveling down here, and I feel okay. I was really bummed out about my bike though, I just can't stop thinking about it. It was so perfect, I just loved that thing. I knew too that it was going to be a while before I could get another one, so I'm pretty deflated now, but I just keep going. I suddenly realise why I seem to know which way to go. I think it's all of the stories, all the way people described it is just like this almost down in some kind of valley of such, with rocks on either side of you, and the cave, almost perfectly waiting for you in the middle, just tempting you with its cause. So I keep going now further and further, and it becomes more bright. I'm glancing up occasionally, trying to see what's going on, but I can't see any more movement. I do notice what appears to be some kind of orange tent though, and a green one, which might be a rock next to it. This is on another hill a bit further away. I remember the thing. The only logical possible explanation to this is that some other people have went here to explore just like I did. And in my young mind, I think, yeah, they're going to be excited to see me. 
Now I do notice something that I can't be sure wasn't a figure of my imagination at the time, but I'm almost certain that one of the figures seems to make a Y pose very similar to what I'd seen before. It was really weird. It was literally just like what I'd seen on the rocks. I can only see the one figure at the time, but I think this is quite weird. I think maybe they're just doing it for, I don't know, I want to find out. I have to have a battle plan now. I decide the best thing to do is go up towards where the tents are just to have a little explore and figure out what they're doing. Because even though I was naive, I wasn't entirely unsensitive to danger. My mum would argue that this isn't the case and she still would now, but it didn't matter. I was there to investigate. So I kept on going. I'm not too far away from their tents and as I walk closer, I notice that the wind starts picking up. Now I've noticed that this isn't the only time this had happened. There was a few other times that the wind had picked up all of a sudden when I was out here like this, or at least on my own in the woods, and it was definitely odd. It kind of sounded like I was going up a mountain a bit, which is bizarre because there was no wind up until this point. I'm now going through an area which brings me closer to the woods and closer to the cave. I actually decided to follow the harder path which would lead me to the tents. I can make them out more clearly now. One is definitely orange and the other's kind of more hidden. I don't know if it has a camouflage pattern or if it's just green but it's very difficult to see. I can only really figure out this attempt because of its close proximity to the other one. I decide to go into quiet mode now, basically not walking on the rocks making sounds. I was quite small then so I'm not really bothered about standing up. I knew I could crouch down for a little bit. I suddenly hear some kind of sound. It sounded like a metal gate opening and it really scared me. I actually duck down and hide under a tree when I hear it. I waited here for probably about 5 minutes or so looking around trying to see if there's anybody else here but me. I don't see anyone. Actually it sounds more like a chain moving now that I hear it once more. So I just stop and wait. I'm really not sure what this is. I'm inquisitive but more scared so I just stayed there for a while. About 20 minutes or so pass when I eventually decide that it's in fact safe enough for me to leave my retreat and I start moving once more. So I'm making my way out and I get closer to the tents trying to be really quiet and I notice the tents moving. I think, ah oh, yeah, they've probably only just moved here or something and not really set it up properly, but I can't be absolutely sure. So I just wait and wait and wait, until eventually I notice something. The tent looks like it's in horrible condition. It looks like it's seen lots of storms. I now stand up and stop crouching as I'm trying to see it better, and I make my way closer to the other tent. That's odd, that looks exactly the same. I can actually see parts of it moving in the wind. Almost in sync with the wind I can hear from being slightly further away. So now I go closer and closer until I can see that nobody's around. I feel confident enough to just walk normally on the rocks now and I edge closer and closer, slowly creeping up to them. I go to the orange tent first and this thing doesn't look like it's in good condition whatsoever. I can see it more so now. I crouch down and poke my head into the tent through that hole. I can see no one, just that this thing was abandoned long ago. For some reason this puts my mind at ease and I feel comforted by knowing this. I now turn around and go up to the green tent. I get a little bit closer to it and I realise I can't see into this. I have to open the zipper, I go to do so, and the door's already opened, it smells really bad in here too. I only looked for a second but I can see no one's in here, so I stand up with the sound of the wind all around me, huh, that's really weird. Why would people have tents set up here and just seem to leave them like this? 
The first one didn't look like it was too cheap either, so I think this is a bit weird. Well, anyway, before I get to that cave, I stand up for a moment with the wind in my ears and I just take a second to think, do I want to do this? Well, yeah, I decide that I want to. I've got to see what it is. I've got enough time in the day to, to just make it back and the sun's come up now and I feel more confident. I'm constantly looking out for different people by the way. I probably should have mentioned this more but I was being incredibly vigilant at the time of this. So I keep making my way down and there it is, the cave. Wow. Beautiful. More pretty than I expected it to be. It looks very warm and inviting. I spend a while trying to figure out if I should definitely go or not. I realise that I'm probably not going to be able to see too much and I quickly look around for my backpack. Oh yes, I think to myself as I realise that I have a lighter in the pack. I didn't smoke or anything, just sometimes we'd like to make little campfires on our adventures and I had it for this. Great, and that thing was almost full. I test it out and I accidentally burn myself. I realise I'm going to have to be careful or not do it when I'm actually outside in the wind. I take a look around one more time just to make sure nobody else is here, and then I notice it again, more strange markings on some of the rocks close to here. What is that? I just don't know why I keep seeing them. It seems weird that they're all leading up to the cave. I'm stuck here pondering why this would be here when I hear the wind in my ears once more. It kind of snaps me out of it, and I run my hand along it again. I don't know why, maybe it was OCD or some kind of habit, but I do so, and then decide that I should just keep pressing on now, and be strong. I start slowly making my way towards the cave, and my feet feel incredibly heavy. I've got the lighter in my hand. My hand's quite cold from gripping it so much. I think I stopped the blood flow, so I stopped doing that after a little bit. I start making my way towards the mouth of the cave when I see something further in. I don't know exactly what it was, but I can definitely see something there. Maybe it's some kind of glowing mushrooms or something, or fireflies. I don't know, it's definitely something with a faint glow there. So I step in, and I can hear what sounds like water dripping. This gave it a really creepy sound especially mixed with the sounds of the wind outside. I'm going to keep going, but it definitely felt odd. It kind of felt like you put me into the scene of some kind of haunted house or something, or you know the movies where the world's ended through, I don't know, atomic bombs or something, and you're out in a wasteland, and the explorers just come outside? Or I don't know if any of you have played the Fallout 3 game when he just leaves the vault, it was just like that, it was just kind of weird. I suppose it did look a little bit like it if I think of it now. But I decided to go in. I don't flash the light immediately, using my torch. I thought I should let my eyes adjust a little bit. I still had some senses about me. I take my steps now, in sync with the dripping of the water in the background. Drip, one foot, drip, another foot, and so on. I'm just constantly doing this trying not to be noticed. I now realise that I need to flick on the light because I've just walked into a rock and I'm scared I'm going to hurt myself. Okay. I slowly raise the lighter up with my hand trembling a little bit and flick on the light. Nothing changes. I can see that there's something along the sides of the walls. It's, I don't know what it is, actually. Maybe it's like slime or something, but... It's almost like a strange liquid, which is a little bit reflective. The cave seems really dark too. I mean, it doesn't match the outside rocks, which are white. It's really dark. The only reason I could really see where I was going is because of the reflections of this. I realise now that I'm going to have to keep my lighter on, which is okay. I just set the flame to the brightest setting, and I start making my way forward. It was actually getting too hot for me, so I decided to use part of my jumper. I know that's a stupid idea because it could have set me on fire, but I wasn't thinking straight. 
I can't see anything glowing now because where I'm going. It's hard to describe it, but it's kind of like I could only see maybe one or two feet in front of myself, if that. I knew I was definitely progressing the right way because of the dripping sound going on every so often, getting louder. But that wasn't comforting. Then, I hear a sound again, kind of like a metallic one. It sounded like a heavy chain swinging. That's odd. I drop down very quickly, turning off the light as I do so. I couldn't be certain if it was because of the wind or not, but it was definitely odd and I don't know where this is coming from. For some reason I get it in my head that now I kind of want to get a move on to try and make my way away from whatever this thing is. So I quickly flicker on the light again and I can see the faint glow of something. It's not too bright and I presume that it's going to be a big colon of glowing mushrooms or something. I don't know. So I make my way closer and closer. I realise that because of the way the rocks are, I'm not going to be able to see it until I'm right there. It was like looking down into something, but you've got rocks obstructing your view. So I go a little bit further, turning off my light for a second so I can feel along the walls. They're very cold and slimy. It doesn't smell bad, so I've not got an issue doing so. I now get to the corner and decide to flick on my light, holding it out in front of me, extending my hand. I don't know why, this made me feel more safe for some reason. I felt like, well, if they can see my hand first, if there is anyone in here, they're going to react to it, or say something, so it gives me an extra second just to run. But that doesn't happen. I did so for about four seconds before waving my hand around, thinking that maybe I could taunt something, but nothing happens. Okay, let's go. Well, I turn off the light for a second and I realise that it's glowing brighter now, these mushrooms. Then, I come around the corner and I am amazed to see so many of these different mushrooms everywhere. There was probably about seven or eight different sections of it, and I can't make out exactly what it is at first. I flick on the lighter again and I realise that they're all connected together. I hold my lighter up towards where some are. And then I realise it's got a different shape, which seems somehow familiar, but I don't know how to describe it. It takes a second, but I realise that these seem to be bones, which are somehow glowing very slightly. It almost looked like if you put the glow-in-the-dark paint off of a watch, which was really fading away onto them. And I can't make out what they are. I do something probably stupid, but I didn't know what else to do. I take out some of the scrunched up newspaper that we used to use before to make fire and some other things. I actually had quite good materials to make a torch because of having firewood and things like that. So in the dark, I managed to set this up and tie everything together with the newspaper to make a big torch. It takes a while and I can't seem to set fire to it until eventually, boom, off it goes. Now it takes about two seconds as I kind of blind myself as I was staring straight at it, and then I illuminated the whole room. I'm now stood, almost surrounded by seven or eight skeletons, all turned to face me. I can now see that only one of them has a very faint glow, the others are barely at all. And I'm just stuck in a trance there. I wipe up my eyes quickly and slap my head, probably about five or six times, starting to slowly panic. What the heck is this? I've never seen skeletons before in real life, so I don't know why they're all like this. Some of them are just piles in the corner, but some of them look like they've been propped up to look like they're actually people. I, for some reason, just stayed here for about one or two minutes, just taking it all in. The cave actually goes on even further when I hear the metal sound again, from now even deeper into the cave. That was my cue to get out of there. I'm very scared that something's going to come from deeper in the cave, so I start moving backwards very slowly and very carefully, feeling along the wall. I trip myself over and out goes the light at the same time. Oh come on, you've got to be kidding me. 
I say to myself. As I turn around, not really able to see now, fumaging around for my lighter. Eventually, I'm able to find it, and I'm feeling along the wall. I keep expecting to hear the metallic sound behind myself again, but I don't hear much of anything. I don't know where my torch has gone, so that's really frustrating. I wish I actually had a flashlight, an actual source of light that wasn't so basic, but I didn't think to. I can now see the mouth of the cave, and I start making myself more and more confident, trying to talk to myself positively in my head. As soon as I get to a part that I'm in a clearing, I sprint out of there. I don't know why I felt so scared. Probably because I've never been in that situation before, but it was weird. I felt fear in reverse. Maybe it was my body taking a while to react to what had just happened. But I was more scared running than when I was actually there. Would you believe it? So I decide that I'm going to run just the exact way that I've come. Luckily, this part is downhill, so I don't have too much of an issue with it. I didn't look around, I was just more focused on the ground. It was almost like everything in my surroundings went blurry except for what was directly in front of me. And I keep up the pace. I'm running, and now I'm almost about halfway to where the ground level's out again, and I have to go back uphill. I stop for a second before sprinting and turn to look, and I can see the figures once more. It kind of looked like two ants because of where I was, but they're at the mouth of the cave, and you can see that they're searching for something, almost like when you've just disturbed someone, and they're trying to get their bearings about them. I take a deep breath and start sprinting, this is all the fuel that I needed. Now I am religiously looking over my shoulder watching them, as they grow further and further away, becoming smaller and smaller. Now the last thing I could see of them is that they both went back into the cave. God, what have I just discovered, what have I just unearthed I think, as I'm making my way back now. I was actually really scared when I see the markings on the rock that I'd seen before again. It kind of gave me a surge of adrenaline as I realised that everything was linked somehow, and I didn't like it. I luckily still have a little bit of water, but drink it too fast and it actually makes me vomit a bit. I was so scared I didn't even stop to do this, I did it on the go and keep going. I don't know where my bike is, but I was probably too scared to notice it as I'm now making my way through the forest. It was pretty tough going, but I didn't feel too much pain at the time. My legs were definitely starting to get more numb now, as I keep going. I make my way back into the bigger part of the forest that I was familiar with. Now the sun was still shining quite high in the air, and I think that gave me some form of confidence, knowing that I'm not out here in the dark. So I keep on going, until eventually, I get up to where the familiar area is, and I'll be able to make my way back home now. As I get there, I realise that none of my friends are there, and I can't believe that they've abandoned me like this. I can't believe what I'd seen. I eventually make it to the relative safety of a little bit of civilization, and I'm trying to keep up kind of like a fast walking pace to get back home. I actually hear a cop car, and for some reason it made me panic. I thought somehow I'd trespassed and they were looking for me, so I actually ducked down waiting for them to go. I say to myself, come on man. I almost felt like I was on some kind of secret mission, just trying to get back out of here. Well, eventually I make it back to my home, just in time for dinner. I now have a new danger and fear. My mum. What's she going to do when she realises the bike's gone? She says, hey, where's your bike? And thinking on my feet, I said, oh yeah, Matt's got it. I gave it to Matthew and his brother for the week, and she says, oh, that's so kind of you. And I didn't say much of anything. I just ate my dinner and went straight up to bed. I could tell I was exhausted, but I didn't know how much so. I actually slept through until maybe 1pm the next day, so I got over 12 hours sleep, and I felt good for resting. It's probably been about... 20 or so years since this experience and I never actually found out what was in those caves. 
whether they're actually real skeletons or not, or why one of them seemed to be glowing, or who those people were. I ended up never going back to that area once more, but for all I know they could still be out there, and something horrible could have happened. I don't sleep easily at night, and sometimes I just can't stop thinking about it and it makes me panic. This occurred when I was about 15 or 16. I was also with a friend of about the same age and his dad. We were exploring the woods behind our houses. We lived in the same neighborhood. We went back into these woods many times to hike around and play paintball. One day though, we decided to go a little deeper in the woods just to check it out. A little background is that this is an old forest growth slash protected wetlands area with a few square miles that are surrounded by roads on all four sides located in the northeast United States. For a while, we were wandering along. It was mid slash late spring, so the forest is pretty lush and green, when one of us sees a small patch of white coming through the woods. I mean, it stood out quite easily in contrast to the green leaves, so we decide to investigate and the three of us headed off in directions towards this mysterious white spot coming through the leaves. If you've ever walked through dense woods, you'll know how difficult it is to go in a straight line because of fallen logs and brush. Anyway, we keep walking towards this object for what seems like a while, but this object still hasn't come into focus. It looks like it's a white blot, and it's just getting further and further away from where we spotted it. We didn't think too much of it at this point, or at least I didn't, and continue walking in the direction of this thing. It must have happened two or three times that we'd walk towards this thing for a few minutes, stop and notice that we aren't getting any closer. Now by this point, I think there was a little tension building, but nothing out of the ordinary. At some point though, as we're getting closer, we do notice the object is starting to fill out. We can clearly see now that it's a tiny white house on a hill. I'd say the structure was about the size of a shed you might keep your lawnmower in. We were excited because how often do you come across something like that? It's still a little ways away, but again, very obvious that this little white house is what we had seen and were walking towards. So we continue towards the little house. And we lose sight of it momentarily as we go up over another hill, but as soon as we come to the top of the hill, the house is gone. Now we're really confused and both look at each other but keep walking up the hill that we've seen the house on. This last part happened pretty quickly. We get to the top of the hill still looking at the other hills close by to see if maybe we just turn around or something and we'd see the little house until one of us noticed an old foundation at the grounds where there obviously a house had once been. The shape of the foundation was exactly the size of this mysterious vanishing white house. I barely had time to notice the foundation when all three of us heard a growl, which sounds like it's getting louder until it's almost as loud as a chainsaw. Nothing was said, but the three of us, including my dad's friends, all sprint out of the woods in the direction that we've come. I don't recall ever discussing what happened to the two other friends I was with that day, since this happened, I tried looking on Google Maps for some kind of indication that the house was there, but it's just a forest which is too thick. About a year and a half ago, I told my brother what happened and we went back into those woods looking for the house house foundation, but I didn't find anything. Although, our search wasn't very thorough though. It was winter so it's pretty cold and had snow on the ground, but it'd be hard to pick out where the house was meant to be because of the snow. One of the weirdest stories I've ever heard happened is not my own, but my father's. My father works as a forest service worker, and he had many weird encounters over his years. This one in particular gave me chills all throughout my childhood, and it made me constantly just question things. Now, I'll tell this exactly how my father's told me and how that he's wrote it down for me. So sit back and enjoy. I think it's truly bizarre. Now, 
to start out, everything's going pretty well in life. I'm happy and my wife is now pregnant. Now this is going to be our second child. We already had our other one who's about one now and we're really excited to have a second. We had a boy and we were hoping for another girl. It turned out that we had another boy but that was just as much joy into our lives. Those who haven't experienced parenthood don't understand how it changes your life sometimes and how it changes your approach to taking risks. I know that I certainly had the same feeling too. Now where I was based at for my job, I didn't really encounter anything too heavy. I hadn't been working in this role for that many years and there was other more experienced guys out there. In fact, a lot of the time I'd actually get quite frustrated because I really truly wanted to do more but I just wasn't able to. Sometimes there would be things that the other guys would know that I could do and they would just rush off to do it before I had the chance to and it was so frustrating. I enjoyed being out there, don't get me wrong, but I was kind of stuck doing more computer stuff and just, I guess, the boring things. Now, at this place, I knew that I could progress, but it was going to take years. They basically offered me all the training and everything, but my god, it was slow. The thing was, I was probably smarter than all of the people there, just not being given any opportunities that I needed to progress. It was almost like they gave me this form and it said everything I needed to do, but there were holes in it that they couldn't see, and it made me feel really uncomfortable. I was quite tempted to join the Navy. I actually wanted to become a Navy SEAL at the time. It wasn't really possible because of some of the injuries I had, but I know that if I really pushed myself, I probably could have overcome them. But the problem was, even sometimes when I was doing this job, even just hiking around and doing my normal things, I would have a pain that I couldn't seem to stop from the bottom of my foot. I actually still have issues with it today. I'm not quite sure why it started, but yeah, it's just something I get on with. So, on this particular day, it was just the same. There was more exciting call-outs and things to go and do, but literally, before I could even get to the radio to say I would do it, someone would say I'm on it and would already be up there with their coffee in their hand, taking the last sips of their coffee before flying on out the door and to go and have all the fun. Yeah, it kind of really sucked doing this, but I guess it gave me more time to think and just relax a bit. The problem is, if you're like me, that time very quickly lends to boredom. I started going through some of the records and some of the reports. I basically had to reorganize them because some people in this office area, they would just throw everything onto a desk and not do anything. They would only look for items if they needed it, which of course is a very stupid idea and waste everyone's time, but back in my day, I guess that's how it was. So I start reading through some reports. There was a few pretty creepy things on there. Some people would say that they had a feeling, like an intense feeling of fear that they couldn't describe, accompanied by a knocking on some of the trees. They were never able to locate the source of this sound and they thought it was just animals but it come up quite often over the years. Then I had a really strange one. Apparently there was a ranger that worked here and a lot of the other people thought that he was going crazy. I was reading a second hand account of what had happened to him. Apparently something had spoke to him and told him the future. Weirdly though. When I looked back through another account, which was more recent than that one, some of the things that he said actually come true, and the person making the report actually noted that and how weird it was. Upon further investigation, it turned out that this person thought that he had spoke to beings or something. I don't know, kind of like aliens? They didn't describe it very well, just very vaguely. Now, it seems like many of these cases were dismissed. There were other weird things too, like a specific area where you'd feel very hot, completely unnaturally to the point that you'd actually question if there was some kind of hot spring there, or something weird that shouldn't have been there, but again, they could never find the source of it. The thing that made this even more bizarre is that eventually the plants and trees and everything in the area would start to die, so you basically knew for certain that something was definitely off there. Now I decided that I had to get out and do the very minimum 
just to not be in the office and that's what I did. I remembered setting out and I was being a little bit more paranoid than normal. I think all these stories were just playing in my head. I remembered I kept thinking that I saw something walking through the tree line above ahead of me, always maintaining the higher ground. It kind of tr just trailed alongside me, it's really hard to describe but it was truly creepy. Now I don't know what it was, but I think it was some kind of large animal there. Not big enough to be a bear, but certainly weird. I did think maybe it was a hiker out there, but it wasn't possible. I thought that was bizarre. I remember thinking to myself that you've just learnt the power of human potential in the mind, and it was pretty scary to me. Now, life goes on. We probably get to about a month or six weeks in, and again, they're just not training me properly. It's kind of really annoying because they'll complain at me for doing something when it's exactly how somebody's told me to do it. And they'll say, oh no, just do it confidently. But then they'll say, why did you do that? And you'll explain that's how you're trained and they wouldn't seem to listen. And it was kind of like a hostile group. I didn't end up staying there for too long, but I'll get to that later. So what do I do? Once again, get reserved to balancing the books and just doing the normal work. Now this is actually at a time before we had computers, so it did make days very boring too. The problem I found is that some people just did not have good handwriting. I've never been the best at reading others' handwriting, but especially in these situations. My god, it was like some of these people had honestly made an effort to write as illegible as possible. And again, if you can't read it, they complain, so... I kind of become an expert of reading these things eventually. And again, every so often there's weird reports. I realise too, quite often when it's recorded, people just think, oh, it's the other guy not paying attention. Maybe he wants everyone to look at him and stuff like that. At least that's on the report conclusion, but... I had a feeling that something was off when I kept on seeing the reportings of some kind of beings out there. This spanned over a number of years too, and long before I was there. They all seemed to be described as relatively the same. They called them the forest walkers. Apparently they seemed to be quite tall, and they would walk in almost a weird limp motion. The weird thing is that they would be silent too, and if you approach them, weird things would happen. Some people said they felt almost like they were high. Others said that they would just know things they couldn't have otherwise and stuff like that. I don't know if I believe in the supernatural that much, or at least at the time I didn't. But I just considered that these were just things that happen when you've been out in the woods for too long by yourself. Now eventually as time increased and I started complaining to the higher ups about the issues I was having, I started to get out more and do more interesting things. I even got to rescue a few people too which is a really cool feeling. I don't know if you've ever experienced it before but there's something so cool about knowing that you preserve human life. You stepped in and you made a big difference and impact for someone. It's not something I've felt before in other jobs too, so I was quite happy. Now, as I go out for a patrol one evening, I remembered having a strange feeling that the air was different. It was almost some kind of metallic smell that I couldn't quite describe. I was concerned that I had some kind of illness or that I accidentally got something on my nose, but... No matter how much I wipe my nose, I can't seem to get rid of the feeling. And there was almost some kind of static in the air. You know like when you have static electric and just before you feel the buzz, it was kind of like that. Now that's when I feel something. I can tell something's looking at me and I stop to turn around and see what it is. And then, I can make out some kind of figure. It's probably about 20 feet away. It's wearing kind of like a dark coloured robe, but when it gets closer it appears more white. It walks with a weird limp and I can't believe my eyes. I actually rub my eyes quickly, not sure for a second if I'm dreaming and it's gone. Now I think this is pretty creepy. I want to figure out what this is, so filled with excitement I actually jogged towards where it was. And I couldn't tell you too much else about it but just that it completely vanished. I've probably spent another hour myself actually searching the surrounding areas just to see if I could find something 
anything there to explain what I'd just seen, but alas, I come up blank. There's nothing there but myself. Now I'm actually a little bit irritated because I don't want to seem stupid. I really don't want to become like one of the people whose stories I've read. Probably to be dismissed later on the same way that I dismissed some of theirs. But currently, it seems like I'm going to have no option but for that to be the case for myself. Yeah, it sucked really. I go back eventually and tell them what happened. Now, no one believes me, which is what I expected, and they say, yeah, you're too junior to be going out there and investigating things like this. I was pretty fed off again. I come from a role before where I was very well respected, and honestly, the way I was being treated was really annoying me. Now, a few months go on, and it becomes winter, and the going gets a little bit more tough, really. It's pretty cold out there. I mean, uncomfortably so for myself. Now, I remembered on one particular day, I can't tell you specifically what I was doing, I just remembered that I was out there, that I spotted something weird, I mean really bizarre. There were these small figures, kind of limping around in the woods, again silently. Now I can't believe what I'm seeing, they're probably about 5 feet tall now, and in more of a white coloured gown kind of thing. Like I said, I didn't know what this was, I thought maybe it was something from Halloween, like decorations people put out there. And I actually wasn't too scared now. I was convinced that this wasn't actually a real thing or threat or danger, so... I decided to step back and very slowly follow these things. Now I didn't look behind myself so there could have been more, but... These things just kept on marching on, kind of down the path for a good 10 minutes longer. Now they never once seemed to notice me or so much as turn around, so again, I'm still not entirely sure what I'm seeing, but I think it's some kind of Halloween decoration that someone's playing around with. I don't know, it could be a cult, it could be anything, but I'm not too worried. I don't know if it was the size of them or what, but I just wasn't concerned. Also, there seemed to be nature interacting normally around, so that meant that these things weren't a threat, at least I thought. So this continues on until eventually, they all stop at something. I stop too, and I can see about four of them. I was incredibly curious as to what they were looking at, but there's no real way for me to be able to see where I'm based currently. I get closer and closer, and realise that I'm going to have to take the long way round now to figure out what it is. I decide to take a stealthy approach and I try and walk very slowly through the foliage and get around. I do make it to a pretty good horizon, and I can see in front and I still can't figure out what they're looking at. Now I'm sure these are people now, so I become a little bit more confident, and I walk down even closer to where they are. Eventually, I ended up crashing through some of the brush and I decide that I'm going to be more present now. Obviously these people know that I'm here, so what's the point of trying to hide away from them? I go a little bit quicker now, and eventually go round to where I think that they're facing. And I can't see their actual faces. It's kind of just dark where that their faces are completely covered up in something. Now, I crash down to get a better look at them. And suddenly, I can hear voices in my head. They don't sound like voices I ever heard before too. And it's almost like my own voice, but different. And I keep hearing different things that haven't happened yet. I hear about the birth of my son and know that it's going to be a boy. I know exactly what he's going to look like, how my career's going to go, what my wife's going to do and some of the hardships that come up, and who's going to pass away in my family. It actually makes me incredibly emotional at this point, and I almost feel like it's too much and start to cry a bit. I ended up kind of just becoming overwhelmed with my emotions, and I fall back into the dirt and stare up at the sky. The sky is very bright today, and it actually looks quite nice. After a moment, I kind of stop hearing the voices so much. They kind of just slowly fade out, like somebody slowly turning down the volume on a record, and I get up. 
I realise now that whatever these things are has gone now, and I'm just here alone, very confused as to what's actually just happened to me. I get up, and I'm sure there's going to be an explanation for this. I ended up scouring around for probably another hour and a half until I conclude that nothing's here. That's when my panic finally catches up with me and I decide that I need to get back as quick as possible. I start making my way there. I eventually get back to the station and immediately write down my report. I didn't speak to anybody else about what had happened and that's when I'm confused. I suddenly realised that what I was reading was very similar to some of the reports of what had happened years before, the ones where that people had considered the guys that were reporting it a little bit crazy or seeing things. And for that reason, I actually took the report and ended up throwing it into the trash. I didn't want my colleagues to think I was crazy, I mean I didn't like most of them to begin with. I knew that this was going to hurt me moving on to the other areas that I wanted to work, so there was going to be no benefit of me actually posting this. And I ended up moving on and working as a ranger in different areas, and doing different kinds of roles too, even being a fire service worker. Now here's the weird thing. I only realised it much later, but I did have a son, and he looked exactly like I knew he would. The job that I changed into is exactly what I heard I would, my wife's role too. Also, some family members that died, they were the exact people who I was told would do so as well. Now suddenly, I felt kind of a weird fear come over me, almost like a wash and flood of emotions coming back, realising that something had contacted me back then, and for whatever reason wanted me to know what was going to happen. I can't put my finger on why this happened or how it happened to me. I just know what I saw was real and that I wasn't the only person that saw those kinds of things out there. Lots of my other colleagues had experienced some very similar things and I just don't know what to make of it all. Now this is an experience which happened to me in the spring of 2018. I had a few which could be considered paranormal in life, but this was the most recent one, and unnerving. I'm an avid outdoorsman, and love to hunt and camp around the Francis Marion and Sumpt National Park. Back in 2018, I took my young son and dog out to a remote area in the National Forest to test out a new camper shell on my recently purchased truck. We found a secluded area of a dirt road, made dinner, and then packed it in for the night as soon as it got dark. Around 11pm at night, I sat up and looked out the back, due to the sound of a dog growling. In the distance, I saw what looked like hundreds of small white balls of light darting around, hovering a few seconds and slowly converging on our campsite. They just looked like dust orbs that you've seen on videos, but these were producing light in a completely dark forest. They then surrounded my truck, and it felt weird almost seeing like hundreds of them. They're like a soft white light, and they don't blink. They just kind of float around. And then, I finally woke up the nerve to open the truck and lit a lantern and promptly they disappear. After turning off the lights and locking up, they come back. My son was fast asleep, thank goodness. I watched them until I fall asleep around 1am. The next morning when we tried to leave, the battery on the truck was dead. There wasn't any lights in the back cab where we would have used any power. And a week later, we actually had to replace the electrical control module. Not sure what happened. <laughs> 